What's happening, guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped are the best male grooming products on the planet. They've only just launched in the UK. They've sent me and Dan a razor each, and I've got to say, proper top-tier stuff. This is the best razor I've ever used. It's the first time I've ever shaved me balls and not snagged the bag. They're good, aren't they? I get the little, you know, I get a little bit of, like, over-the-pubes tub, and I nick that. I've just been using an old head trimmer. I've used this and you're like, oh, that's a slide, that's a glide. So you don't get that sting in the shower. Yeah, it's horrible. When you get like a, a little cut on your bag and then you get a bit of ball sweat seeping into the cut and you get sweaty sting. Mm, keep talking sexy, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. This is it. They've engineered the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. It's the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0, and it's just been released in the UK. It's smart as fuck. This is their third generation trimmer. It features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce manscaping accidents. And when I'm saying this is the best razor I've ever used, I'm, I'm not messing, you know. I know it's easy to say that when you're getting sponsored by a company, but it, it's it's really, really, really good. It The battery's amazing. It lasts for an hour and a half, so you can shave for longer. It's water resistant. You can use it in the shower. You don't have to be shaving stood over the toilet anymore. It's sick. One of the coolest features is the LED light. It illuminates the way as you shave along so you don't get any nasty nicks. And they've just got an upgraded 7,000 RPM quiet stroke motor. The nicest bit, you get a load of kit when you get this sent to you. But the charging stand is charged by USB and it looks sleek as fuck. So you're not getting any whinging from your partner, your missus. It's going to sit in the bathroom. You're going to be proud of it. Look, don't take our word for it. If you're listening to this, watching it, pause the podcast here. Go and order one for us. And they don't just sell razors. You can get all sorts of male grooming products from manscaped.com. And experience it for yourself. It, it's really, really good. Your balls will thank you. This is the important bit. Every listener of Have A Word gets 20% off. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WORD. That's WORD, W-O-R-D, at manscaped.com. And make sure you use that code, otherwise they won't know that we sent you. That's right, 20% off, free shipping all over the UK and in America, actually. But you can use the code word, word, that's W-O-R-D. We should have picked a different word, because code word, word, just sounds clunky, doesn't you, it? You're not thick. You get it. Word. It's word. Can I Time shave? to shave those balls. Should I shave yours now? Adam, should I shave yours? We'll just do that now. We'll show you. Oh, don't. You meant to flinch. <laughs> Pev. Oh, it's the podcast. <laughs> you hadn't thought about what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the podcast. Well, I try now. I don't know if you've noticed. I try and like have something to say the second you press record. Yeah. So I, I felt the need to say something. And then my brain went. <laughs> just on your own ear, bro. Just went really Ron Seal with it. Welcome to Two Men Talking on a Video <laughs> Audio Show. <laughs> so, uh, are we going to be are we going to be honest about the sort of chronology, chronological order of how this was recorded? Yeah. So today's guest, which I, I, if you're a regular listener of Have a Word, you'll now know is in the second half of the show. The first bit is just us two dickheads. Is Eshan Akbar? We recorded it about three, four days ago now. <laughs> three uh, days ago. And it's, I'll tell you now, right, it's, it's probably the funniest episode. And I know that's a big thing to say 20 seconds into a podcast, but it's probably the funniest episode we've ever done. But if you are of a nervous disposition, if you are easily upset by humor, you want to skip this one. <laughs> this is genuinely, when we went to this format and got the studio and started bringing guests in, one of the conversations that we had was like, oh, we can't lose the the essence of what this podcast is. It's why we do us in the first section and the guest in the second half. I think one of the worries was it, it, it we might lose some of the funny with guests. By the end of the Eshan record on Wednesday, I wanted Eshan to be a part of this podcast forever. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, you think it needs to be, we need another lid. Anyway, it's coming uh, in the second part of today's show. Oh my God. It's so funny. But um, you know what happened this morning? I thought we were going to do a little bit of theatre and pretend that it was all in sequence. So I have dressed exactly as I was dressed on Wednesday. 
<laughs> and you haven't. Well, I thought about that, but I was like, <laughs> I can't remember what I wore and I can't be asked to open my laptop to find out. But that is the only episode ever that I've not worn a hat for. Like, don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why I'm getting more like you know, comfortable with the nonce look after a few years of ha- consistent hat wearing. You look good bald though. Thanks babes. You do. But it's now it looks like, I was Would like, you ever get a toupee? Um, no. No. But there's, I wouldn't, I think they're advancing, aren't they? Yeah. Here's my problem with, if you're bald, I went bald at 23, yeah. whipped it off. And if, what are you looking for? What are you looking Something for? Something to put on your head? Your eyes. <laughs> Your, your dangerous eyes. I love it when he starts going like, oh. And, and there's only, a, bl- head, there's only like, a blue cushion. In my head, I was like, there's got to be a wig somewhere. <laughs> oh, sorry. Let me just go into the wig. <laughs> I went bald at 23. Yeah. And I I was living with a comedian, Geordie comedian, Seymour Mace. We were, he was like my first comedian flatmate. And we had a bathroom light that was just right in front of the mirror, but like it's dead standard. We just moved in. And I was doing my hair that I had spiky and like, now I look back and go, holy shit, I was going bald, but I wasn't accepting it. It was like really going. And I, I, I saw the outline of my scalp through my hair because of the light. And I was like, I just, it was great because I made that decision that so many lads don't make. I was like, I'm done. I know it, I'm done. So I'm fucking, it's gone. And I've never had hair since. If at that point, really good hair replacements were an option, I could have taken it. Have but you seen- once you've done 17 years of bald, imagine the fucking rinsing I would get if I turned up to the hot water dressing room, you, Freddie, Paul Smith, Binty, <laughs> fucking Phil Chapman, and I walk in with a hello. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Have you noticed anything different about me? I I don't, I never, oh my God. It's given me anxiety thinking about things. That's an imaginary situation that's not going to happen and I'm getting heart palpitations. I reckon you'd get less shit for doing that than the time you turned up with a ukulele. (laughs) I fucking love that ukulele. Do you know what? It's funny. And I never took it to hot water, you fucking... (laughs) Do you think do you, the one that time I, bit, I just, I just yeah, you know, that was like, ugh. that's my future is me playing ukulele at kids comedy. Like la 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 la. What colors do we like? Green. That is the future. When all this goes to shit. Oh, uh, do you know what's funny? The other night I actually made a note on my phone to talk to you about an advert on the telly. Cause like we, we put adverts in our podcast. It's how we sort of, pay to make this shit possible in 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 part and we try our best to make the adverts you know when we're not advertisers we're not actors we're comedians so maybe the adverts seem a little bit clunky have you seen the advert with former cricketer australian cricketer shane warne and his fucking mate for the hair transplant surgery oh jesus it's like they just both of them are like we can only do one take today <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to they've tried to do it like it's a conversation so me and you did the adverts to camera don't we we change it up we just this is what the advert is this is the product we only ever put adverts in that we have products we like anyway hey and if you're watching them going ah oh, this, this doesn't seem as relaxed as dan and adam usually are that's because we are absolutely <laughs> not relaxed i think what next time we do a record for an advert we'll set up a second camera and we'll play you the 17 <laughs> minutes of bullshit that it takes me desperately trying not to make him laugh <laughs> and then also just how annoying it is when you're trying to just say three sentences without fucking it up but we have only just started doing that we will get better at it we'll yeah. get snappier at it this shane, shane warne's been doing bald adverts for t- a while though hasn't he it's his mate there's a bit where so they're talking about like the two different types of hair transplant you can get so one is like <laughs> they just get they just get a bit of carpet and super glue it to your head right and the other one is called Strand by Strand, where they literally, like, they put each individual hair on your head until you've got a full head of hair. But <laughs> Shay, sounds painful. his mate goes, yeah, so I went to the surgery and I got the blah, 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 blah. What about you? And he goes, well, for me, it was Strand by Strand. And then his mate, and I swear to God, this is the cadence, goes, well, 
whatever it takes for you personally. Right, warning. <laughs> I love the idea that Shane Warne only does one take. Ah, uh, look, right, we just do one fucking take because I'm fucking Shane Warne. <laughs> oh, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomo's got it. Haven't you, Tomo? Yes, Shane. <laughs> I'm ready. Has he been in a car crash? <laughs> Tomo's, Tomo's got it's, major brain fucking it's so injuries. Shit. <laughs> oh. uh, and go, Tomo, Shane, go. <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> Tomo's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's on like every half time during the footy so I've been watching loads of like the Champions League games and stuff because they're doing one every night aren't they right and every half time it's like the third advert in and every time it comes spend on spend some money there then it's not that's that's high like to buy adverts in that can't yeah. be cheap <laughs> you think they could have been like Shane Tom we've got to just fucking spend a little bit of time <laughs> it's so fucking shit I am a big believer in just own your big shiny bald head because fuck me it's grim when when everyone's pointing at the back of your head at a party once you've shaved it off have you seen the video of hot, in hot water where some guy lets me get about three minutes in and then goes you fucking baldy <laughs> <I'm> like <"Woo!" laughs> and it's the easiest thing to be like mate i've shaved it off i know i'm bald plus i'm wearing a hat i'm trying to save you from the fucking visual of my big dick shaped head give me a break like as soon as you own it like it's fine like if anyone goes take your hat off i'll go yeah there it is like i'm not like i'm not like oh my god they know i'm bald everyone knows i'm bald but it's the the guys who are like like gluing when you've got Prit sticking you're like big night tonight gotta get the hair ready <laughs> when you fucking put P PVA glue on your fucking fringe Astro's hair <laughs> little bit of sand <laughs> I just make it look so natural you look fucking bad I oh. I thought of you last night Adam I thought of you Um, I I now it's not Laura's fault but I do blame her we have got a new boiler. The the old boiler. Where are you going with this? The, the, yeah, listen, got a new boiler. It's a new can, I just, can I just rewind for a second and tell you exactly what I've just heard? Because yeah. you you haven't heard yourself. You've just gone, Adam, I thought of you last night. Right? I'm not going to blame Laura. <laughs> kind of her fault. Now, we've got a new boiler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me tell the story. I, I, I will explain everything. I always think about you and you're sleeping <laughs> don't always that's I'm okay now I'm qualifying everything <laughs> you are famously like a fucking igloo sleeper aren't you you like it nice and cool room yes. temperature yeah you, you sleep nude you've got frosty little balls yes yes now yes. last we got this new boiler it's a combi boiler we don't know how to work it classic we've got it Laura's like I've learned you explained everything she's great it's going to be a really good boiler apparently there's a little controller with the temperature. Now, if the batteries fall out or that turns off, the boiler decides that um, it's because the batteries are frozen and everyone's about to die. <laughs> so it puts the fucking central heating on to 43 degrees Celsius. I have never known anything like it. <laughs> Last night was warm. It was tit sweat warm. We've got these fans for the studio. I've bought one and taken it home and propped it. Like, you know when people have it in the corner of the room just wafting them gently? Mine is like next to me on my head. <laughs> It was yeah, that's a, where mine is. It was on a, my bedside table. It was a warm night last night. Mm. So I've got this just wafting to the side. I woke up just having some fucking weird dream, but it was like, I was like, oh God, it is a warm night. <laughs> Fuck me, it's gone warmer. The fan was doing that, you know, it like moves around the room. Oscillating. It, oscill it oscillated towards me and I was like, oh, that's a relief. And as it moved away, even though I wasn't moving, I was like, come back. It's so warm. I was like, fuck me. I was like, oh God, it's like, it must be tropical. It's been warm recently anyway. Yeah. Then my foot started feeling warm. And then I touched the radiator. <laughs> fuck me. It was roasting, roasting. I've never known anything like it. On one of the warmest nights of the year, we've got our fucking central heating up to 30 so I was like, oh God, I don't know how to work it. It's Laura's fault. She fucking booked the boiler guy, I'm the plumber. So I'm, I, I went and woke her. I, I love. Wonder why you needed one. 
<laughs> She's in charge. Like, Don't you do any of the housework yourself, Dad? No, we got a boiler guy, boiler man, a, t- a wrench guy, <laughs> a toolie guy, <laughs> toolie guy, boxing man, pipe, a pipe king. Oh, that sounds really camp. Uh, Laura co- calls me. Could you? Yeah, yeah, nice one. That's a why pipe she, king. That's why she died. Um, yeah, so I woke Laura up with and just shouted about the heating. Fuck me, she she woke up like I was a murderer. And even though I was, I was like, Laura, she went, yeah! I was like, Laura, murderers aren't going to wake you up. That's not what murderers do. Like creep in your fucking house, true. creep in your warm house and then go, darling, I'm going to stab you. I don't, I don't think that's true. What? Some big, some like burglars or murderers will wake you up. Cause like, especially murderers. It's part of their fantasy, isn't it? To watch like the life drain from your eyes. They don't just want to stab you in the head and fuck off. <laughs> do they not? Like, you know they want to see you die. Like if you're already asleep and they just put a little, little silence to your temple. Yeah. They don't get. The- <laughs> they don't get the, oh, I'm dead. They just get more asleep. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds stupid. You might but- as well just leave them. Unless they're snoring, they're like, right, fucking put you out of your misery. But you know what I mean? I think a murderer would have broken into our house last night, done the lock, or, or fucking j- j- jimmied the window. <laughs> And then stepped in, reached leg over the window, and then their fucking leg would have touched the radiator, and then they gone, ah, fucking weird cunt sauna freaks, and then out. But she literally, no, hang on, no, no, no. If you're coming in for me, she she reacted like I was I was there to kill her. I'm sure a murderer wouldn't go, darling. <laughs> God, like, there's nothing. They might though. Maybe they want like a a family fantasy before they do the killing. That's so Some tough. people are mental. Yeah, murderers are mental. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they might be like... Well, most murderers are mental. <laughs> most murderers are, hey, come on, say what you want. No, but I've, I got, reckon I've most, got a hobby. I reckon most murderers aren't mental. I reckon most murders happen out of necessity. Like it's Not like because someone's lost it. It's like, he's in my way. I want that shit over there. Okay, like someone's taking half your podcast profits. <laughs> the way you said that, like... <laughs> no, it's because there's a reason for it. <laughs> okay. No, but I reckon most... There is a reason for it. And then there's the mental ones who come in, wake you up, get in between you and Laura in the bed, and they're like, Daddy, Mummy, can we go to the park today? And then you're like, fuck are you doing here? And then he's like, please, please, can I have some cereal? And then you're like, get out me house! And then he kills you. Right, okay, good. That's fucking dark, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) I love it how in that fantasy... I like roll with it for a bit and don't jump out of bed like, hey, what are you doing here? I don't know you. What are you doing here? Yes, you can stay <laughs> for now until you explain yourself. What's that? Na- get that na- How many times I told you? Knives out of the bed. No knives in bed. Have you ever had a burglar? Have you ever had someone break in? We had a guy on drugs a couple of years ago try and bash the back door in when I was at, <laughs> why does everything sound like innuendo in my head? I need to get like, try to bash the back doors in. Um, <laughs> he tried, he was on drugs and he'd been at a party and then for some reason picked our not on drugs house to try and get into. I was away. That has made Laura, I think that's what set Laura off being a bit tetchy about break-ins, but he wasn't trying to murder people. I think he just needed a fucking, a line. Yeah. So, uh, so no, we've never, I've never had a burglar or anything. We never had a bit, when I lived at my dad's, we never had a burglar, but we did have an invasion. So, the, <laughs> the <What>? French. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. My dad's back garden backs onto a road. And there was this lad who was getting chased by a lot of other lads. And he was trying to get away from them. Yeah. Right? As it tends to be the case in a chase. Um, I think he'd like done something wrong and they were trying to fucking attack him or whatever. So, he jumped into my dad's back garden. Yeah. My dad, no matter what the temperature is, has his back door open all the time. It's infuriating. It's one of the reasons I'm delighted I don't live there anymore. Okay. It's just constantly open all the time. Like, I like getting cool in bed because you can warm yourself up when you sat in the living room. Nightmare. But this was in the summer anyway. And <laughs> it was it, the guy who was just trying to get away. So he jumped in the back garden thinking, I'll get into that back garden, then I'll jump into another one and I'll get away. But our back door's open. So he didn't... He wasn't planning for the fact that me and my dad would both just be there waiting for him. And he shit himself, especially because I'd just got out the bath and all my clean t-shirts and shorts 
were near the washing machine downstairs. So I came down just before he jumped into the back garden. I'd come downstairs from the bathroom. I had no top on, just a pair of undies and one sock, right? And my dad was there and he was just about to change his T-shirt and my dad had no top on. So this guy... <laughs> And because someone had jumped in the back garden and I thought it was going to be a burglar, the first thing I did, because I was in the kitchen near the uh, washing machine looking for my clothes, the first thing I did was grab the biggest knife close to me. So I got like a big bread knife, right? Cause bread? <laughs> it was just the biggest one. I wanted to look intimidating. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I just grabbed it and then ran to the patio door. So this guy was confronted with a, I was heavier at the time as well. A sixteen stone fat scouser with no no pants on, no top on, one a sock. bread knife, one sock, and his dad behind. It looked like snatch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like dogs? Do you like fucking dogs? Do you like bread? What did he say? Do you like croissants? What did he say? He was like, "I'm just trying to get away from someone. Please don't hurt me." So we just let him walk through the house. And let him out the front door. Oh, you fucking, you good shit. Good on you. Yeah. I mean, he might have, like, shagged one of their beds or something. Maybe we were aiding and abetting a, a, a felon. You never, no, but what are you going to do? Is it a uh, felon? Like, right, right, hang on, lads. Is... Hang on, hang on. Hey, hey, but, hey, Adam, put the bread knife down, right? <laughs> Listen, we'll give you safe passage, but we're going to need to do some kind of fucking <laughs> judgment here. Because you might be a nonce pedo. I don't know. You could have scratched someone's fucking vox all over. Right, lads, lads, we're over here. Come over the edge. <laughs> Not all of you, just two or three representatives. <laughs> you sit on that side. You sit on that side. Right, now, put your case forward. Have a fucking kangaroo court with you topless <laughs> and one sock on. I'm like, right, we need to know what's going on here. Yeah, yeah, he's a cunt and we're just going to kill him. All right, <laughs> maybe we should have just let you run through the house there, lads. All right. I'm going to give you a head start. Lads, stay in your seats. Go. you got a 10 second head start. Off he goes. <laughs> I, I think that's good of you that you didn't go, get the fuck over with that, like, those cunts. They, that happened to us in Preston one time when we were lads. Me and my mate Fraser went to town about 14 years old, 13, 14. There just seems to be, there seems to be a spate of lads in town just fucking punching other lads it happened to me and it happened to Fraser. Just randomly, lads just stop you on the street like, where are you going? And you're like, what? Boom. And they just sucker punch you. Like, like you're Why? 30. Just starting. Starting on people. You know what it's like? Oh, just in Preston? Yeah. I just fucking hate Preston, you know. Raggy. Raggy little shit. So it happened to me. You have a go at Liverpool for being aggressive. I've never known anything like that in Liverpool. Yeah, this will have never happened in Liverpool City Centre. <laughs> No lad will have ever, for no reason, punched a lad in Liverpool. This is just a British town centre thing, isn't it? Maybe a northern thing. Fuck knows. We just got lamped for no reason. And there was a JD Sports. And we went in the JD Sports. And just, like, Fraser was crying. We were, like, clearly out of our depth. And they were at the front looking in. And we went to the manager. We went to someone who worked. They were, we've been punched. Could you let us? Could you help us? And the guy was like, what do you mean? Like, could you? We just basically went in and, like, little pussies, like, we've been punched by some ruffians. And he looked at us. I can't remember exactly how the conversation went, but he basically went, Oh, you pathetic little shits, and let us through the storeroom and out the back lane, and we fucking pegged it. Like, so I. How old were you? About 13. I thought you were going to say 30. Jesus Christ. About 30. <laughs> I was with Etta and Laura. These lads came up and punched me. I was like, quickly, everyone. Yeah, I, I, so I, I think you've been good guys. You, for me, have been like the manager of JD Sports that day. You've given him safe passage to run away. Yeah. And who knows what happened. The, the, one, the time I got punched, this lad came up, nicked my baseball cap, Charlotte Hornets, new starter baseball cap, cool as fuck. Turquoise, probably not that cool. I ran after them, took the hat back. He fucking lamped me. And I lay down. I'd never been punched before. And my reaction was to sort of just turn around because that's where the punch had come from. He sort of punched the back of the my, back of my head and I sort of just got on the ground. And a woman who saw it happen stood over me and sort of swung a bag at them and went, go on, love, you just run for the next bus home. And I fu and r ran away that time as well. <laughs> that is my, they're my two fighting stories. Fraser getting lamped and we went through JD Sports. 
<laughs> and a woman standing, a middle-aged mother of God knows how many, go on, love, you just run away. And I fucking did. We didn't go back to town till we were about 15, 16. We like, had a full year or two off. <laughs> fucking pussies. I am such a fucking pussy. Someone's auntie fucking <laughs> swung a fake Prada bag at someone to get you away. And honestly, thank God she did, because I was not up for fighting. Do you know what? Looking back, Preston was a little bit raggy. The town centre was raggy. I don't think I don't think it's probably like the worst of it, but that was it was fucking bad that. Did no lads just start on you for no reason when you were that age? It's almost like they're like 14. Don't count. It's not illegal. Bang. Um maybe around that age and a bit younger. I thought you were talking adult before. No. So yeah, like there'd be like sometimes you'd just go to swimming bats and then There'd be a couple of kids there who were like, I, I'm, I'm quite hard, me, are you hard? Should we have a fight when we get outside? And it wasn't like, it was it was like friendly, do you know what I mean? It was like, the fucking animals. That's the, you can't fight after you've been swimming. When you're a kid and you've been swimming, that's the hungriest and weakest you've ever felt. Do you remember coming out of the swim bars and being like, oh God, oh God, and you needed a bag of crisps from the vending machine. I can still remember when I was about, 13 one specific day i went swimming and how good the snickers tasted after i got out i got a snickers from the vending oh i'm salivating i want a snickers now but that do you know do you remember, do you remember what i mean that vending machine post yeah. swimming baths yeah. it wasn't like it wasn't even a snack it was like a prescription it was like medicine you just got out and you'd like used all your energy and you're like oh, i got mum i'm thinking I need a bag of crisps do you remember the um fish and chip crisps Salt and vinegar. They actually were in the shape, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my Fishies. God. We smashed some of them. Scampy fries. If someone had started a fight. I mean, I lay down anyway, but I'd be like... I didn't accept. Oh, that's very gentlemanly, isn't it? I was it? like, I reckon you probably beat me up, lad, so I'm all right, And he was like, oh, right, so, so. I think he just wants to be the hardest guy in the pool, and I just conceded to him. It's just doing market research. <laughs> <Who's> the- <laughs> Are you the cock of the leisure centre? <laughs> No. All right, great. Well, I'm just going to pop you down as fifth. I'm number one. You're number five. How's your mate doing? Put him at four. What a fucking prick. There were some great fights in our school, though. Like, because there was, like, a, a ranking order in our school. Cock. Did you call it cock? Yeah, the cock of the school. Cock of the school. <laughs> it's weird. Hey, I was cock of the choir. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even cock of the choir. I probably was. Um, but, like, there was a couple, like, it was like the Champions League Play, like the the knockout rounds in our school sometimes like t- like a lot of those hard lads there's like a mutual respect isn't there it's like we're not going to argue with each other we're not going to fight because you know everyone's got a punch his chance I'm hard you're hard could go either way but in our school towards like sort of year nine when you're getting a bit fucking angsty oh you, puberty's hit as you well you just can't wank enough can you there's always testosterone no there. girls are letting you letting you touch anything and rightly so um <laughs> 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 no, but it is being 13. It's fucking yeah. hard work, isn't it? But then You're there was just a like, couple someone of, touched my penis. Like, there was like people talking about, oh, who, who's the hardest kid in our school? And then the two hardest kids would get wind of, oh, they're talking about who's the hardest out of us. It's defo me. No, it's defo me. Should we just have a straightening and sort it out? And, and they'd have a fight. always be another cunt going, listen, I'll speak to that. Like, he was literally like the Eddie Hearn of the situation going, listen, I'm sweet with everyone. I'm going to talk to them. Like, he will see you at f- like three. You're going to be there at three. In Hamilton yeah, in the musical, up. they call that your second. You know, like from Jules back yeah. in the day. Send in your second, see if they can set the record straight. Do you accept the challenge, sir? <laughs> Finish your Snickers and fight him outside Amber, the leisure centre. sir. Do we agree that duels are dumb and immature? Sure, but your man has to answer for his words, but with his life, we both know that's absurd, sir. Hang on, how many men died because Lee was inexperienced and ruinous? Okay, so we're doing this. That's actually from uh, Adams High School. Very, <laughs> very theatrical, secondary modern. <laughs> that's, just, that's from the new th- uh, musical theatre called The Cindy Path. But they fought the big ones. I think they did. I can't really remember. Yeah, they're, they're the legendary ones. Yeah. 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 And there was a couple, like, there was one where, like, we had the really tall lad in our school called Josh, who just had that. Um, he was, like, six foot three in year eight. Do you know what I mean? Just, like, but gangly. Yeah, he was getting served alcohol when he was, like, fucking eight years old. Yeah, he had a beard, like, before we did our sats. A driving license at seven. Yeah. <laughs> Married with kids. And there was a lad who was known to be quite hard, but, like, about my height, called Peter. 
And then they had a big argument, and everyone was like, Peter's quite hard, but Josh is just too big. Peter beat the <gasps> fucking shit out of him. Pete beat the shit out the big one. That's exactly what happened at our school. James Crabtree and John Lloyd Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking when you said it. I was like, that, do you know what it reminded me of, that fight? Do you know when everyone's like, mate, Triceratops and T-Rex, it's definitely going to be T-Rex, but Triceratops is all small and fucking hard. Yeah. It really felt like that big guy, little guy. My my dog, Minnie, beats the shit out of my dad's chow chow. It's the same thing. He's a big, fat dog. She's a little, tiny dog, but she's got the attitude. Do you know what I mean? And you, were ne and you were never had a school fight? Oh, no, I had a few. So what happened at the leisure centre? You were like, I'm not arsed, mate. I've just finished Yeah, well, swim. I didn't want to fight, but if I needed to fight, I could or would. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want to just be like, are you hard? Me too. Let's go and settle this. That, there was no reason for that. What, what are you into? Can I tell you my interests? Uh, punching other boys in the face? I'm sure I've told you this first one. The first week of school, there was a lad who's now a boxer and he's dead sound now. But, you know, the first week of year seven or whatever, he was like sort of picking on a lad I was not mates with yet, but I'm mates with now. And I went to the lad who was getting picked on because I had attitude and I didn't know who any of these people were in your first couple of weeks of year seven. And I grew up council estates and I was fighting with my mates every five minutes and I I was brought up to not let people pick on me, do you know what I mean? And I was like, are you fucking scared of him? And then the lad went, are you not scared of me? And I went, absolutely fucking not. And he went, let's have a fight after school then. He's a boxer, this lad, and he was then. I can still remember him running at me. <laughs> and he hit me five times and I said, and this became a nickname for a while, I don't want no more. <laughs> and it just stopped. <laughs> right? <laughs> Literally, for about six months. Dish, 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 dish. I don't want no more. <laughs> Literally, for about six months in school, my mates would be like, I don't want no more. Just every now and then, just in the middle of a class, you know, like, the teacher's set the work, everyone's silent, I'm just writing away. So, E equals MC. I don't want no more. I fucking shut up. <laughs> I've had fucking years. Mate, that is brutal. And then there was another one. one of but my he stopped. One, two, three, yeah. four, five. And he then just he wants went, to win the run. fight. And the, and, but the... the I think maybe that's because he's a boxer, but at least he stopped and yeah. didn't go, yeah, well, I want to give you more because I'm a fucking psycho. Yeah. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There was a, <laughs> my best mate, one of my best mates from school, Joshua, I'm still mates with now. Um, we had a massive fight in maths. So, with teacher in the room? Yeah. She was trying to break us up. Oh, She was a dainty little maths teacher. Like she was early 20s. Thin, blonde hair, really thin glasses. I can't remember her name. Penny Crayon. Yeah. yeah. And me and Josh sat next to each other. We were the best at maths in the whole school, me and Josh. Like, from, from literally, like, reception, <laughs> right? And we'd sit together because no one was on our level, right? <laughs> and I was sat there with a water bottle, but you know those, like, sports cap ones? And I was just squeezing it a bit. Just, like, anxious, just bored the start of the lesson. And a bit went on his side of the thing. And he got his water and just squirted it in my face, right? So our, our mutual mate, Mark, just trying to cause fucking murder, just went, yeah, lad. And he gave me a full bottle of water. Because Josh had gone to the bin to sharpen his pencil. So because Josh had swilled me with water and I didn't want to lose face, I walked to the front of class and just emptied it on his head, the whole bottle of water. Holy shit, Adam. And he turned around and he hit me with like these monkey... Shots like he didn't punch me, he went like he hit me with this a few times in my head. So I because he's a bit quite a bit taller than wait, me. Wait, 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 what did he <laughs> think he was? Spider Man, I, I tell you what, like, I, I, like there's there's a culture in which that's the bit to it you with. I can't remember what one it is, but it's fucking maybe it's Japan or Taiwan or something. Yeah, it's one of them <laughs> Taiwanese, <laughs> Japanese, Chinese, Malaysian. But he hit me like three or four times. And then the teacher goes, hey, pack it in. And I was like, I'm not packing it in. I've just been punched in the face three times. And I grabbed him, right? Because he's, again, he's quite tall, Josh. This is a different Josh from the one before. And I I, I pushed him, like, because he's, like, bigger than me. And I, he had the height. I had him over a desk. So, not, like, bent over. Okay, but, like, good, 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 on good. his back over a desk. Yeah. And he's, like, kicking his legs, trying to get off. And I was just... Like leaning over, punching him in the face like that. And the teacher's going, Stop it! She's in the middle. I'm sure she caused a few as well. I'm a fucking prick. And then we like we both got suspended for a week. And then when we come back, we both had to leave school. 
at different times. So like we were in a lot of the same classes. We'd be sat at opposite ends of the classroom. And in the last class of the day, it would be like, right, it's... Uh, so I think we used to finish at like quarter past three. At quarter two, three, they'd go, right, today, Josh, you go home now. And then half an hour later, I'd go so that we couldn't fight straight after school again. And how, <laughs> mate, there's so many questions. <laughs> One, why was I such a pussy? I got punched and lay down and let a middle-aged woman defend me. And also never felt any shame about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then didn't go into town for two years. Two, how is that only a week suspension? If, if, at our school, if you'd pinned someone else down <laughs> and were punching them in and around the head while the teacher was near you going, stop it, stop it. I think that might be more than a week. Like, hey, go and calm down. The thing, I think it helped that we were two of the best students in the year. Right. We were two of the brightest lads in our school and they were like, it's going to fuck up, fuck up our GCSE coaches. <laughs> <laughs> if we get rid of fucking student A and student B and we have stuck with all these fucking Zs. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Wow. Because me and Josh twatted our exam results. We were dead clever lads. Like, like, I was good academically at school. I don't think they could afford to lose us over a little scuffle. How long did it take till you and Josh were all right? About, I don't know, two or three months. That's a lot. That in, in school years, that's a well, lot. Well, we just stayed clear of each other for a while because you've had a fight and you, like, you sort of ace each other for a bit, don't you? After you've had a physical altercation with someone. And do you remember what sorted it out? Well, all of, we had so many mutual mates. So they were constantly making jokes. And I think in the end, one of us just made the joke back and the other one laughed. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah. but like Josh is like, Josh is my oldest mate. I've, I've been mates with Josh since reception. And then we've sort of always been sort of mates through school. And then there's about four lads I've kept in touch with after school from school. And he's like, other than Carl and Steve. I, I talk to Carl the most and then Steve and Josh, me other two mates. I, I talk to them more than anyone else. That's good. Should we have a word from our sponsors? <laughs> I love that story, mate. How have I never had that story before? I don't know. I've done like n fucking 90 records and I haven't heard that gem. Gotta keep some in the can. I lay down, cried, <laughs> and ran away. Fucking, fucking pathetic. That. What's happening, guys? If you love this podcast and you really want to support us, you can go to haveawaredpod.com. You can get yourself some merch, something like this hoodie. Something like that t-shirt. There's plenty of stuff for you to go and have a look at there. There's also links so you can buy tickets to the Have A Word live shows and also tickets to mine and Dan's tour shows if you want to come and see us do stand-up. That's all at haveawordpod.com. We also do an extra episode of the podcast every week on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Sign up on Patreon, get the exclusive Patreon episode. There's also some discounts on merch, discount on live tickets, but the extra episode is only on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Okay. Okay. Oh, we have got a would you rather and a question that we've been asked in one form or another three or four times now over the past couple of days. Should we, should we, ask, should we do the question? Let's do the question. So, it feels weird to not know the question. Have you seen the news story about Russell Howard? Yes, I do. Yeah, I have seen the story. So, for the uninitiated with the story, uh, Russell Howard was doing an outdoor gig the other day, uh, trying out some new material. You know, can we, and by the way, massive news comedy's back again, unless the government decides to be cunts and cancel it. Um, we. Me and Dan are doing a gig this Sunday in Liverpool. By the time this has gone out, the show is already sold out. Very, very sorry about that. Um, there's going to be more. And as long as there's no other setbacks, in the next few weeks, we will announce the Patreon thank you show and maybe a couple of other live shows, whatever we can figure Fingers out. Crossed. There's There's live stuff coming from me and Dan. We know that's what you're after. Uh, and we're going to get it done as soon as we possibly can. We promise. Um, so Russell Howard was doing one of these outdoor gigs. They've been happening for a while, the outdoor ones. We've done a couple, it's haven't we? Four or five weeks into the outdoor gigs, and they are definitely, if you're not going to be indoors, they're the ones, because the drive-in cinema-type comedy gigs don't work. Totally. The live stream is, is a shutdown thing that I don't think will continue, but the outdoor gigs, it works. I still haven't done a Zoom gig. I'm five months in, and I've still stuck to my guns and not done one of those fucking Zoom things. Um... Gigs are back. Outdoor gigs are back. I'm doing a couple of outdoor gigs this week, even though normal gigs are now back. I think uh, I think they're going to stay. I think next summer, you know when it, there's those baking hot days and it becomes harder to sell comedy 
I think there's going to be a few beer garden gigs from now on on the UK circuit. I think they're going to be a thing. People and- are going to be happy with the outdoor thing because I don't yeah. think the virus thing, if it's still around next summer, if it's still partly affected by it, people might want that fresh air, that outdoor gig vibe. They absolutely might, yeah. Um, so Russell Howe was doing one of them. And he was trying out some new material, which we all have to do. And especially at Russell Howard's level, he's got to go to these gigs to get a tour ready. He's not like just doing material. He can't do the same material all the time because he tours every couple of years. He's doing arena shows. People are paying 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. I don't know how much his tickets are. He's big news, isn't he? Um, But every year has to be a brand new 90 minutes of material. And when you're doing that, you have to go to comedy clubs or now outdoor gigs and get it ready or put work in progress gigs on, but you can't really do them at the minute. The only thing's running outdoor stuff. That's what he's done. He's gone to an outdoor gig to do new material. Now, a woman on the front row was recording him on her phone. She pointing the phone at him, recording his set. Uh, a couple of times, apparently, he tried to sort of banter around it and said, oh, live in a moment, turn your phone off, don't be doing that, blah, blah, blah. And she basically refused to stop. She's like, I'm filming it. And eventually he just had enough and he he canned the set. He was like, I'm, I can't do this, I'm getting off. And he walked off stage. He was like, I'm not, while this is happening, I can't do the gig. And there's be, we've had a lot of people just message us. I think, I said about three before, it might be like close to double figures. A lot of people have sent us that as a tweet or a direct message or an email and said, just want to know your opinion on this, lads, because obviously we talk about stand-up a lot on the podcast uh, because it's what we know and what we it's love. It's become a national news story as well. The Independent's headline online was stand-up comedy doesn't need this sort of press coverage right now. Russell Howard storming off damages the brand of stand-up while it's already struggling. You're like... It's got uh, water spunk in my eye. Oh, okay, good. Well, don't start a fight. <laughs> fucking hell, he's getting jumpy. <laughs> he's got the fucking muscle memory. All right, leave it. Yeah, it, re- it, it that... It was disparaging, like, you know, very negative. It's not just a gone viral video. People are doing commentary pieces about judging it, I think, because it's been filmed. And because him booting off was filmed by someone else, it's a viral video. Yeah. And I stand 100,000% with Russell Howard. With her. (laughs) No, because she likes comedy and she wants a memory of it. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Because she's a cunt. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Here's the thing that the non-comedy people don't understand. At these gigs, you know when comedians get in trouble for being offensive. You know when we say something wrong, when we say something horrendous, and you get in trouble for it. That if you start filming new material gigs and start putting them on the internet, there's not going to be a comedian left. Everyone's going to get in trouble. Everyone makes a mistake at a new material night. Maybe not Russell Howard. He's more family friendly, I suppose, but. The stuff I, the stuff you see me say on tour and on my special, and if you come and see me at the minute where it's refined stuff, if you see the early versions of that, it's not as well thought out, it's not as well written, it's more offensive. And also, if that goes online and it goes viral, I can then never do that joke. Every joke I put online that starts doing hundreds of thousands of views, I can't do that at a gig anymore because maybe people have come to the gig because of that bit of material and gone, I like that guy, I want to go and see him. You can't then do the same stuff to those people because people with comedy, people expect to see newer stuff. You can't ruin the process of a of stand-up comedians by filming it. I totally understand that you're like, oh my God, Russell Howard's here and he's famous and I just want a little memento of this day. Most comics, if you ask nicely after the gig, will get a selfie with you. They'll come up to you, won't they? And they'll, like, they'll get a picture or whatever. Filming stand-up when it... It's intellectual property. It's the same as going to the cinema and filming the film to go, oh, remember that day we seen George Clooney in the new George Clooney film? Here he is. Who are you even going to show the video to? Who? Re- no one wants to watch that. No one wants to watch your fucking early onset Parkinson's video <laughs> of a fucking stand-up gig in a beer garden in fucking Chiswick in London. Yeah, heavy breathing. Like, ah, ah, I like Russell Howard. Anyone who wants to see that video is going to watch Russell Howard's special or DVD when it comes out. No one's asked. Just fucking stop doing it. We can't do it. We can't let you film an early version of a joke. A, it'll ruin the main version of the joke. And B, it might be more offensive than it's going to turn out. You, you just can't do it. And also, and also... You can go, well, they didn't know. It wasn't clearly signposted that you couldn't record. No one from the venue said that that, that she couldn't record. Yeah, but Russell Howard did. He said, 
Please don't record. Be in the moment. I don't want you to record. Be a better human than like, I've got a phone and you're in front of me, so I'm going to keep recording. That's why he's fucked off, because someone ignored his request to stop recording. You don't. You shouldn't have to explain all the minutiae of the circuit to someone. If a performer, go, performer goes, I don't want you recording, don't be a bell and go, no, nah, but I want to. You fuck off. Did you just murder that child in the wacky warehouse? There's no no murdering child signs up, so uh, I just, <laughs> am I not? Am I meant to know I'm not allowed to murder a child because you, you clearly haven't signposted that this is a non murdering child area of the of the venue. Are you wanking in the post office? <laughs> Show me a sign. Show me one good sign. <laughs> and my stamps never come off their letters. Good oh, why? <laughs> it was subtle, sort of over the head slam. <laughs> People want to know my opinion. My opinion's very like. If you're going to see a performer, especially in these beer garden gigs or a new material, especially if they're an unlisted special guest, just be happy that they're there. He's super, super famous. Even if he, he's not your favourite comedian, just be like, oh my God, he's, he's big. He's off the telly. He's at this little gig in this beer garden in the middle of nowhere. Let comedians work their stuff out. If you want great comedy, if you want great stand-up to happen and be a thing, which you all do, you might not realise it, you might not care as much as we do. You want the best comedians to put an amazing hour of stand-up out that you'll really enjoy. That's only going to happen if comedians have got the freedom to work the hour in before they go on tour and then before they film it. And you, whether you like it or not, Comedians are going to feel like they can't do that if this keeps going on. If people keep filming at gigs and keep people keep releasing little clips. Yeah, I feel your frustration. Has this happened to you? Yeah, it happens quite a lot. And normally people are just nice about it. Yeah, and turn it off. It's that That's the bit, isn't it? Yeah. And you can be like, well, the venue should have thrown her out for doing it. It's all a bit lo-fi. It's all a bit... These outdoor gigs, it's all happening on the spot. It's been put together quickly. They haven't got the security in place. Not everyone knows the rules. But if someone says, please stop recording me, be a better human. Yeah, just be sound. Like, comedians are generally sound about this sort of stuff. We know that not everyone knows like the do's and don'ts of comedy. Because maybe that's the first time you've been to a gig and you're like, oh, I'm allowed to do this. But if someone who is at work at doing their job goes, can you just do this for us? Because you're not allowed to do that and I'm doing whatever. Just be sound and go, oh, I'm really sorry and put it away. Don't be a dickhead because otherwise they'll walk off. And the person most pissed off, I imagine that Russell Howard walked off, was the one who loves them so much that they felt the need to film them. It's going to happen again and again, especially with big comics. Just don't do it. If we want, If we want to film our set, we'll bring a camera. Don't so, worry about it. So why is it why has it got the coverage that it because it's getting the coverage of like uh, Russell Howard's being a right old fan. Is that is that basically what is why are they trying to cover it like that? Is it just because it's it's something that's gone viral? It's because so journalism's in the fucking toilet, is what it is. <laughs> Journalists are cunts, aren't they? It doesn't matter what the story is, it doesn't matter whether it's important. It's everything sensationalized. It's happened with COVID as well now, where people are like uh, Another hundred people have been this with COVID. And then you look into it and it's like, yeah. oh, they got tested for it in March and now they've been run over by a bus and now, they've, now they're have now a COVID death. They've wiped 10,000. It, it doesn't matter about the story. It's what's going to get the story read. Yeah. Like, Russell Howard storms off stage after foul-mouthed rant at... Innocent. At innocent woman. bystander. Like, that gets more than... Who lost her dad just seven years ago? That gets so many more clicks than woman was filming Russell Howard and he was right, like rightfully not happy about it. And also, just obviously, this is a bit of insider trading. Like to be to paint Russell Howard as a dickhead is is really difficult. <laughs> he's dead sound, and and we're not just saying that because he's like a famous comedian. Yeah, but he is genuinely a dead sound famous comic. He's I've never even met him, but I assume he is. I know he's, he's one of fan. the good eggs. Yeah. Like I've known him since I started out. He was, you know, in Edinburgh when everyone's like bothering everyone else. I was at a cafe with a mate of mine just and he literally went out of his way to come and say hello. And he's one of like the bigger guys who's who could just be walking around the fringe going, I don't give a shit. I'm one of the famous guys. He's genuinely a nice chap. Yeah. Like so to paint him as I like oh, here he is having a go, you're like, he's just frustrated. I guarantee this is his work. He dealt with that situation better than I would in his situation. <laughs> 
I guarantee, yeah, it'd be a fucking bigger news story if it was me. If I asked a woman three times to stop filming and she didn't, I'd be like, why are you being a stupid cunt? What are you doing? Turn your fucking phone off and fuck off. Get out. Can someone fuck it off? Because either she gets fucked off or I'm fucking off. Fuck her off. Get it out. Put it in the pub. Oh. Throw her in. <laughs> me and Adam have talked about it a lot on the podcast. Those moments that are so memorable in comedy for the wrong reason are the ones where you're like, oh, I'd prefer it if it hadn't happened. But as another comic, you're like, hmm, but this is the one I'm going to be talking about for a year. One of the absolute favorites is when everything shuts down and a comedian tries to stop the show to get every to get someone thrown out is one of those it's sort of why we love live comedy although you don't want it to happen to you it's one of those moments that gets all the other comics out of the dressing room like what the fuck is going on here i had to do it at my last liverpool tour show didn't i there was an irish girl on the front row who kept answering every rhetorical question <laughs> as if it was and i get it i get the first couple of times if you're a bit pissed and you you're not a regular comedy if i go you know what it's like when you're in tesco and she'd go, oh, hey, fucking Tesco. And I'd be like, uh, yeah, but you don't need to answer. It's just, I, I'm just, it's a pattern of speech. It's not actually, all oh, right, you know, but I, I went to Tesco earlier and I was in the fucking queue. And I was like, yeah, I've got a story about it though. And I reckon mine's probably going to have a bigger punchline than yours is. So yeah. can you just shut up? And, and, and then and 20 minutes later, not on worse than a hangover. Oh, the hangover I had last week. Oh, and I was like, my God. you're going to have to. And then she started talking to her boyfriend, doing what she was trying to do to me because she realized she wasn't meant to answer my questions. So I'd go, oh, you know when um, you were at school? And she'd go, oh, I had a brilliant school story, right? When I was at school, oh, I fucking no. I shagged the teacher. You know those Pornhub videos oh, where the teacher no. fucks the student? I could have been in one of those. And I was like, you can't even talk to him about it. She's like, really? Front row as well at a, at a tour show. This isn't a fucking club night. It was a Thursday, a seven o'clock start, and she was bladdered before the, the gig kicked off. And in the end, I could feel the audience hated her. And as soon as you've got that locked in, you know you can get someone kicked out and you don't lose the goodwill of the crowd. Because sometimes a comic goes too early with it. You know, like a Friday or a Saturday and they get pissed off a bit too soon and they go to the security. Well, you fuck it off. And you can feel the audience go... She wasn't being that bad. And he said a couple of things. That night in Liverpool, I felt the audience were just like, she needs to fucking go. And I went, uh, I forget the the security guy's name, the the guy from Hot Water in Liverpool, not Stewie, the other one. I was like, lad, I think it's, is it Mike? I went, Mike, just fuck it off, please. And the you, it, it was like someone had cut the tension in the room with a knife. Everyone went, <sighs> and I went, she needs to go. And then someone went, yeah, she needs to go. And the room's like, Ray! And she just got, she went, for real? Are you really kicking me out? Yeah. Well, I haven't done, and I went, you have done it. Just fuck off. Honestly, just get out. And these are the bellends who go online and go, I got thrown out for, for laughing. laughing. <laughs> you're like, you definitely did it. If you're a fan of this podcast, I've probably said this before. If you're a fan of this podcast and you want to realize how fucking stupid the whole public of the UK is, Go to every comedy club's trip advisor right now. Pause the pod, go do it, right? Go to Hot Water Comedy Club's trip advisor. Go to the Glee Club, which is in Birmingham, Nottingham, Cardiff, Glasgow, and Oxford. Go to the Stand, which is in Glasgow, Edinburgh, and Newcastle. Go to the Frog and Bucket in Manchester, the Comedy Store in London and Manchester. Go to Just the Tonic in Birmingham, Nottingham, and Leicester. Just go and find all the comedy clubs of the UK. Comedia in Brighton and Bath. Go and find these comedy clubs. Go to TripAdvisor. Go straight to the one-star review. If you can find 10 that don't say they got kicked out for laughing, well, I'll give you a present. Ask for a present and I'll sort it out. They're all exactly the same. And I'm telling you right now, nobody in the history of comedy clubs has ever been kicked out for laughing because what a fucking stupid business policy that would be. Yeah. How was the gig? Oh, everyone smashed it and there was no audience left by the end. It was fucking ridiculous. I love that moment where where you try and the problem is not everyone can hear the person at the front. You can. They're like, it's almost like they're in your mind. Like, I fucking knew you. Yeah, yeah I, I went to school as well. But the person, like even 10 rows back, sometimes they can't hear them. So if you've come off a run of gigs that are annoying, this is why Christmas runs can be hard work. Because you've dealt with like three shows in a row that are annoying. So the fourth one, you're like straight in and ming, 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 and you're bringing all that annoyance from previous shows and you go, oh, for fuck's sake, shut up. And the crowd are like, oh, well, 
<laughs> well, we're just here trying to celebrate our works due for the birth of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And that comedian, who we've not yet met, has just been very mean to a poor, like, yeah, They go hunter. from, like, doing a line oh, off the back row to, like, Alice the Cats in the fucking next move. Oh, it's Alice so... The Kratz. Fr- you, Alice the Cats is the Disney film, isn't it? You want to be like, come on, guys, I'm not just picking on people. They're a bell end. It's so frustrating. Well, you can't do that as a comma. Great Can't when be, the no, crowd are on your no, side. No, I'm in the right. She's the knob. No, boo her. <laughs> it doesn't work, does it? As soon as an audience is... It's one of the biggest problems with being a comedian, you know. if The second you become unlikable... Romeo Dunn. A, a musician doesn't have that problem. You can go and be like, I fucking hate that cunt. He bullied me at school. But if he's got a fucking set of pipes on him, you will dance to his tune. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because... And that's when... It, Whenever musicians talk too much, I'm like, just play the fucking song, mate. <laughs> uh, uh, just in between the two songs, I want to tell you, don't tell me anything. Just sing your fucking song. <laughs> you're not, it's a live performance. Just, you're not hosting a show on Radio Bell and 97.6 Radio Bell Sniff. Just do the fucking songs. We're like, it's better when we do the jokes. Do the jokes, do the jokes, do the jokes. As soon as we have to do, some comics cannot do crowd work. They cannot do the logistics of making a room work. It's almost like, just let them do the bits because they're definitely funny when they're like uh, could you be quiet uh, uh, it takes you know, hot all water. the fun out of it hot water comedy club in liverpool um they uh i'm there on saturday by the way this saturday the 22nd there's three shows if you want to come and see me go and get some tickets hotwatercomedy.co.uk uh, i'm also there from the 2nd to the 5th of september if you want to come and see me there just doing 20 minute sets uh it'll be good so come and see some of it'll be new some of it'll be shit but it'll be fun um at christmas because they know it can be eggy they don't book anyone who they wouldn't book to compare. Yeah, because they have to be able to do crowd control. Apart from Troy Hawk. <laughs> so Milo McCabe, the character Troy Hawk, who we will get on eventually, is a requested guest. Um, they book him because he's great at crowd work anyway. It doesn't really work as a compare. He has compared though before and it was good, but he's he's his set is interactions, isn't it? Totally. So like me, Danny McLaughlin, Mandy Knight, Beth Black, Freddie Quinn, Paul Smith you Danny Deegan they're like if you can compare for us you can do sets of Christmas because we know at times you're going to get four minutes in with 16 to go and just going to have to go into crowd work so they don't book anyone who they don't think can do that they don't book Songy McSong either because they're like we have to be able to rotate the bill and at a Christmas gig when everyone's thick as fuck off the head on beak and full of ale you can't put Songy McSong in the middle and then put my girlfriend's annoying at the end. You just can't do that because that ends the gig, doesn't it? You can't have Phil Nickel go on and do the only gay Eskimo as the middle set. You can't give really drunk people a rhythm and a beat and then go back to, I'll tell you what I've noticed. (laughs) Who's drinking? Because they're kind of like... Yeah. Oh, God. That gave me the little... Like future P- PTSD, Christmas gigs are coming. Christmas gigs are coming. Christmas, Christmas gigs, gigs are coming. Come. Always for the Watch cunts. out, look around. Drunken cunts are coming to town. Na 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 na. Have a line. Na 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 na. I'll have a line. Na 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 na. I'll have a line. Tis the season. It's always the real shit. Woo! Oh, fucking hell. People hate January. I love it as a comedian. I'm sorry, guys. We've only sold 70 tickets. Brilliant. (laughs) Are they animals? No. Great. Uh, Shall we have a little break and then come back with... Eshan Akbar. Oh, it's a treat. If you feel like there's any joke that might upset you about anything, particularly racial insensitivity, do not watch the second (laughs) half of this fucking podcast or listen to it. Just pause it here. We'll see you next week. It's absolutely fine. Join the Patreon. You'll get an extra episode. But do not watch the second half of this show. It's the funniest, most offensive thing we've ever done. And I fucking adore it. We'll see you in a minute. Shout out to Trans Alloy Wheels, one of our sponsors for this week's podcast. If you need anything doing to your car, bodywork, alloy wheel refurbishment, anything like that, they're based in Leeds and they can do anything for you if you're based in the Yorkshire area. These guys are a well-trusted family-run business. If you need anything on your car, sorting out the bodywork, the wheels, jazzing up, fixing, these are the guys to see. Trans Alloy Wheels Limited. They're dead good lads. Please go and see them. They've been a big supporter of the podcast from day one. We love them. They do amazing work. We've had so many good reviews from our listeners. We've gone and seen Charlie. 
Go and get your car sorted out and tell them we sent you. As Adam said, there's a massive list of things these guys do. And the best news is, as Have A Word listeners and watchers, you get 25% off everything. Make sure you let them know we sent you. You'll get a discount. They know we're sending them customers. Everyone's a winner. Now back to the podcast. Oh, and welcome back. Welcome back to Have A Word. Ooh, that was strong back there. Back. That was like extra scousy. Oh, we've got a guest here. We hey! are. He's Asian. He's disabled. The BBC lover. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the Asian thing is not the disability. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deaf. Is this like a security blanket thing? You, you know what it is? It's because you know, uh, it's because I'm fat. To be honest, I can't hold it. Are you time. covering your stomach? Yeah, without even realizing I'm doing it. Do you want the other one for your chin? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just sit like this. Have you got it's a third really one for his dick? <laughs> this is it's really funny when a fat guy takes a piss out of a fat guy. Oh, funny. Welcome, man. Thanks for coming in. I'm so happy to be here. Oh. Does I have a word? It is? I have a... I can't do it. I've tried can't to do what? The, the intro bit. Look, you can't come on this podcast if you're not going to get our accents accurate. No, he's, trying to, that to he's, you. Not, he's not no. trying to do that. He's I'm trying, trying to do the intro. He's trying to do the intro. Welcome to Have a Word. Is wow! That, Did you put, break, pull the mic uh, towards you a little bit? I think it's angled at a weird, weird spot. There, there you go. There you beautiful. Go. He's a fucking radio host. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> it's normally up here, though, for me. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Have a word. I can't do it. What? What are you no, trying to do? He's the trying intro to, do, to the podcast. He's trying to do East African. You're trying to do East African. He's trying to do the lady. She's not. Ha- she's not East African. She is. She, where's she from? Mozambique. Africa, <laughs> Zimbabwe, Madagascar, Zimbabwe. Oh yeah, one of the. Africans. That is not East Africa. Oh, it's south. It's that south. Is south. <laughs> yeah, it's south. It's southeast. It's 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 over that way. Okay, but yeah, she is. We got it off Fiverr. Did you? What Wait, do, do, you do you think, think it was, was one, us? I think it was you. Do you think it was? It was you. you. Actually, thought it was yeah, me. It's you. It's definitely you. Check out our very funny YouTube videos. You can download and subscribe. At have a word Why are you not. doing Madagascar? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> well, she she's from what? She, is this Zimbabwe? Two lids, two lids. <laughs> <laughs> why does it? Why does it feel less nervy? Because because Ashan's Asian. I'm like, have at it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can't cancel you, mate. Hey, Adam, stand down. You've got a long run, long run. <laughs> but she she is genuinely from Africa. Okay, and we we what she charged us like ten quid at first to do a load of the stuff, and then the second time she was like, "Oh no no no, you have to pay me more now. You, I am regular part of the team." She basically went from the first one, which was it? like, yeah, she was like, the first record was like, we, "This is a podcast. It's called Have a Word." The second one was like, "You can download, subscribe at YouTube, check out our funny videos," and the third one we were like, <laughs> like adding things on, and she clearly went right. These fuckers are making money here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. she asked for a hundred dollars. Now I don't know the Zimbabwe Zimbabwean. economy. Okay, but I think that's fucking ridiculous. She wanted a hundred US dollars. Oh, uh, okay, not for Zimbabwean. two minutes okay. of talking. That she does in her house. I imagine she's got one of these setups. How much did you get paid for your last Zoom gig? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I, d- I, I actually did one on Friday night, very warm evening. Etta wasn't feeling very well, so I was like, I'm going to set it up in the garage. Still got Wi Fi there. That would be great. Then I was like, oh, I can't shout my fucking offensive material out onto the fucking road. So I closed the garage. And you know on these Zoom gigs, they're like, could you be in the online green room for 7.30? Yeah. And my stage time was 8.30. So I sweated like a fucking Wait, you nonce just sat there? for an hour waiting for Jason Manford to introduce me, getting hotter and hotter, and then just shouted. I was, you know what you can see yourself on the webcam? I was bright pink and sweaty and then doing jokes about looking like a pedophile. It was <laughs> fucking horrible. And I finished by opening the garage from the inside and just came out like a swamp monster and just went, Wah! just like the fresh air on. And my neighbor was like, what are you doing? I was like, probably just probably a stream Just before gig. we move on, if you are watching this on YouTube and you've only ever consumed this podcast via YouTube, you won't know what we were talking about at the start there. So on the podcast version, the audio version of this podcast, we have a, like a two minute intro which is voiced oh, by thinking. an African lady. Where on YouTube, it just starts. The episode oh, just starts. Okay, right, fine. But the, the podcast version, if you go and check that out, it's a lady going, welcome to Have A Word with Adam Rutt and Dan Natingale. And you thought that was Dan, but it is not. We paid her 
So we had authenticity. Right. That I love it. Adam always goes back to that. We paid her. It can't be a problem. <laughs> is, is, is there a if reason? If you pay a woman, it can't be illegal. Here's, it's, what, I'm it's, here's what I'm curious to understand. Did you want the accent? Yeah. Why? Be why not? Yeah, but why, why? Because we are two white men, straight white men, from the north of England, and right. we needed to add some diversity to this podcast. So we thought, what's the most diverse thing we could get? So we got a black dwarf female from Zimbabwe. <laughs> Did you see the profile picture? She's no. A dwarf? It's just, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing. Well, she's. <laughs> and why are you looking at me like she's hey, very, Chad, she, Why are you laughing? <laughs> in fact, I said dwarf. You fucking prick. She's very I didn't small say on midgets, the thumbnail. I said dwarf. Little person. Oh, yeah. Dwarf's actually right. little person. I don't know whether they're bothered in Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've got other shit going on. It was a whole person of the Mugabe got hold Even of I went, Ooh. I don't think Zimbabwe have got round to sorting out the offensiveness of the word midget. Yeah, I just don't know whether they're there. They're, they're there. Yeah. Culturally. Yeah. Yeah, they're okay. probably not. So that that is a really good remembering that we are now audio and video. <laughs> Some people like just finding the podcast, like Eshan's fans going, yeah, I'll just watch it on YouTube. What the fuck was the start about? There was a reason for it. Sorry. Okay. There was a reason for it. Sorry. This is also, YouTube-wise, the first time I've not worn a cap on. The, it's so warm in here today. We've got fans on. There's fucking four of us in here. Well, I'm and I've gone full, full Moby Nancy. Because I've been out all day and this is dead sweaty and horrible. Yeah. That looked quite good, actually. Kind of like a Bollywood... Bollywood, yeah. Your hair, don't, have you washed it today? Yeah, it yeah. looks light and fluffy, yeah. Yeah, it looks, looks and fluffy. fucking greasy. <laughs> and I'm joking. <laughs> looks good. Oh, dear. It is warm, though, isn't it? So, no hat. Hat. <clears throat> Eshan's here. Yeah. Is this, does this feel like coming to Runghorn, like you are leaving civilization and traveling up to bandit country? Like as you got here where you're like, I don't know where the fuck at. Because I imagine Runghorn, if you if you live in London, feels a bit like, the fuck? You, or is it all good? There, are, I live in a really shit part of London, so oh. it, it feels pretty much the same. Right. I've got an industrial estate near me, where they <laughs> they. Runcorn is an we've industrial got a estate. <laughs> yeah, we've, <laughs> we've got a rundown post office. This, I didn't know, but my favourite Bombay mix is made down the road from me in London. Oh right, yeah. It's your favourite Bombay mix. Yeah. You know the packaging on Bombay mix. The what? <laughs> <laughs> it's made my ears sweat. It's an Asian pathogen. <laughs> it's an Asian pathogen. Yeah, God. Do you know? Do you know the um the plastic receptacle yeah. that they keep? You know. Those. <laughs> I'm so tempted to take this to a, a, level, a level. You know your Asian biscuits. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> every to tell that story every, in a every time I see one of those packages, I'm like, it makes me think. I bet where you know they, they're like, no, we can't really be bothered like getting branding or a logo. Yeah, yeah. We'll just get some really weird. Looks like an Indian restaurant around the edge of the thing, and then yeah. just in really an block elephant. letters, like yeah. yeah. Bombay <laughs> mix. It always makes Helvetica me glad. I bet that's a fucking depressing 50. place. That's yeah. that's made, and it's round the corner from your house. It's down. It's amazing. I couldn't believe <sighs> it. Got a Chinese supermarket there too. Why is that relevant? <sighs> don't know. It's just like <laughs> part of a big industrial estate. We have a Chinese stuff. supermarket in Liverpool, don't we? Cedar. Where is, is it? it? On a dock. Oh, uh, oh, I don't know where it is. Oh, the There'll big be one. loads. There'll be loads. There's a big Chinese. Well, the Polish one as well, isn't there? Yeah. Polish supermarket. Oh, I love a Polish energy drink. Like, <laughs> what? what? What is? What's the difference? <laughs> I just like because you don't know what it is. It's all in Polsky, and you're like, I might die. I might, you know, get big muscles. <laughs> Do you I like, fucking what was love that it. Drink called? Like uh, it was called wait, wait, energy. Wait, no, a grenade. I oh, think was it was. We went to play footy on. Um, Sunday night in Manchester and like half the team had dropped out so Jason Manford organises it and I was like I'll bring a few mates to fill in and we went over Carl come with me and uh, at the end of it Manford you know like we get sponsors for the podcast and they send us products there's an energy drink company called Grenade 
And Jason had just brought a crate with him. He was like, they've given me hundreds. I just thought I'd bring them. The lads can have one. And me, Carl, and my little brother, all opened them at the exact same time, took one sip, and immediately threw it in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst tasting drink what, I've what, ever had in my what life. What flavour was it supposed to be? It's, it tasted like regret. Like, there was no flavour to it that I've never... It's natural ingredients. Right. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's one of those, it's like, grenade, but it's... They're trying to do it with, like, you know, any of the shit that makes energy drinks fucking really fun and dangerous. I've never really had energy drinks. I mean, I've, had, I've had a Red Bull and a Jägermeister. <laughs> you crazy fucker. Like a Jäger bomb or something. <laughs> so you've had a little bit of energy drink? Yeah. I got addicted to them at one point. I don't know if I told you this. When I worked in McDonald's when I was young, I... <laughs> So I worked at McDonald's from the age of 16 to 18. And uh, I would take... I've always been... So basically, if I get offered work, I take it. It's the same with gigs. And it drives Jay mad. If I've got like a Thursday night off and I get offered 100 quid to go and do this gig, the working class lad in me can't go. I'm not going there for 100 quid tonight. I've got a night off. I'm like, 100 quid for 20 minutes work. I'll go and do that. And I was the same with like bar jobs and stuff. If I got offered the next shift, I was doing it. Mm. And McDonald's, they have three shifts... On, you know the ones that are open 24 hours so you can work like 8am till 4 in the afternoon mm. 4 until midnight or midnight till 8am right and there was sometimes where I'd get in to do the 8-4 and then someone wouldn't turn up <coughs> for the next shift and they'd be like oh we're going to be staff short and I'd go I'll stay on do another 8 hours I'm already there I'll do it mm. and I, it, it was happening so often that I used to know I was going to do it every week and on my way to work I would go to home and bargain Home and bargain. Yeah. Not home bargains. Home bargains to home and bargain. Uh, Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And I would get a litre of, uh, like, own brand energy drink, but I'd get two of them. I'd get two one litre bottles. Fuck it now. And Jeez, then, what colour was it? Like, piss. Oh, like, green piss. You know. Like, chlamydia piss. Ugh. So, <laughs> when I started the second shift, in the break, I would get between shift one end and then shift two beginning. I would drink a full litre of energy drink and then as the night went on, I would just top myself up every time I started crashing a bit. So I'd have a litre before the shift and then another litre spread out over eight hours and then I started getting heart palpitations so I don't drink energy <laughs> drinks anymore. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'll yeah, do it. that is insane. And but we that, used to drink pints of vodka Red Bull, didn't we, when mm, we went to town? Oh yeah. That's not the fault of the energy drink, although I'm not really defending it because I don't think it would pass many, you know, like full medical It's 29 checks. pence for a litre. Yeah, that's but insane. when you're on that second <laughs> litre and you're like, I've had two, I'll just top up the third. <laughs> <laughs> My heart feels weird. You, anyone else got a big heart? Yeah, that's that's not how to drink of it. The, I like one in the morning because I don't drink coffee. Oh, do you not? Yeah. So no. you have an energy drink in the morning? Sometimes. I mean, when I say sometimes, <laughs> you know, most days because I'm like, woo! So I get, I literally look forward to it. I'm like, right, my child's like, daddy, daddy. I'm like, yeah, let's, <laughs> I'm going to get on your level, and then we're running around the garden. Like, Laura's like, she's, he's just so good with her. He's like off his tits <laughs> on taurine and all sorts of shit just to keep up and then when I crash fuck it gets weird with me like on a like whatever is in that crap like taurine and caffeine when that crashes and I'm having like a little glucose low yeah. and she's in a bad mood it really is passive aggressive moody toddlers what do you do to get out of the no you just have to deal with it don't you but I, I use it as a like in the morning like people do with coffee yeah. except mine's in a fizzy can like no <laughs> adults drink it with about <laughs> 300 tablespoons of sugar in it yeah, when I have the sugar-free ones. I told Adam, this oh. is from a couple of months ago, but okay. I, I, for I, you. I was, bought, you, I was yeah. buying a week supply, so I had like four <laughs> or five. I don't drink them every day. Uh, and I was at the counter of a news agent, and the guy behind me, classic Lancashire, just went, whoa, mate, you're drinking, you, you need to change your ways. <laughs> <laughs> drinking energy drinks, fucking kill you, mate. And the guy just working there was like, what is going on? He went, my brother, right, we're drinking that shit, drop dead, 26. <laughs> And then he really intently went, change your ways. And I went, right, I will. Yeah. And then just bought them all and, and I've kept yeah, thinking. Clearly yes, that he did cook. <laughs> yes, he did smack. Yeah. Yes, he yeah, got exactly. hit by a train. But it was because he was full of energy and he ran at it. Yeah. When the coroner <laughs> moved, you know, put, got him down from his asphyxia wank accident, he's like, move these monster cans. <laughs> What's your vice then? What's your vice? You don't, you're not dr a boozer. Yeah, he is. Uh, yeah, I am. Oh, okay. That was me. Racially profiling your drinking there. <laughs> because you thought I was representing the Muslim Council of Britain. No, you're, a, you're a lapsed Muslim, aren't you? I am a very lapsed Muslim. Yeah. Like, so, I, I, I like alcohol. I like bacon. No, I, 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 I like you, you, were, you were raised Muslim. <laughs> 
That was so funny. I honestly know bitches sorry was for coming on that. that might be the funniest thing anyone said on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol, bacon, and Jews. You are a bad, bad woman. <laughs> That should be the name of your next Edinburgh show: Alcohol, oh, Bacon, yeah. and Jews. I re- yeah, yeah. Jeremy when you were Corbyn raised, Muzzy. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, how old were <laughs> you? I was say it. Anyway, uh, is, yeah, I was is Muzzy allowed? <laughs> Muzzy sounds like a scouse. That's like an area that of fucking Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, Muswell Lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're a fucking. There's not he dogs. Hill. <laughs> Muzzy Hill. I was uh, I was raised Muslim and I was really devout. I used to lead the call to prayer in my local mosque. <gasps> you got a good voice. Yeah, have you? It's all right. Do the song. Oh, no. <laughs> the song, the song. It's a call to prayer. Do the song. <laughs> Do the fucking. Song. Come on, you know Muzzy songs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one time. One time I was doing gigs in the Middle East and there was loads of muzzy songs every yeah. fucking morning. But there is, though. <laughs> Keep it down. Like, I've done Dubai and then every now and then, like, yeah. <laughs> clock it to the hour. <laughs> it's like every tar- every every building's got a radio Every on. muzzy yeah, church. Yeah, David Getter. <laughs> Countdown. <laughs> but what is oh, that? That happens, isn't it? Yeah, no, but it's, it's, it's more rhythmical. It's got a beat. Uh, it hasn't got a beat. <laughs> 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 it's called Beethoven what? Fifth Symphony. <laughs> Which techno mosque were you sitting around? <laughs> <laughs> time, time, time to break. <laughs> do you know, could you still do it though? Probably not as well as I used to. It's, it's better to have a prepubescent voice. I think with any kind of religious singing, it's better to have a prepubescent voice. What? It I, is, it is. It's it, true. Right, I was a I was a chorus. I was a choir boy. Yeah. Yeah, it's better to have a... I danced in the... It's the Muslim choir, yeah. So you were all... No, 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 no. I was a choir boy in my school, which was a Church of England school, whilst at the same time... So you were singing like Jesus bangers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though you were a Muslim. Lord of the dance in the afternoon, kill the Jews in the... <laughs> 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 that's a different call. That's a call to murder. That's... Yeah, that's yeah. 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 Oh, mad. The, when we were in the choir, it feels like the sopranos are like the young lads, and then the bass are like all the six formers six were like. Formers, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Altos were like <laughs> all the fourteen-year-olds whose voices were just sort of breaking. Yeah. So sopranos like ha, oh, yeah. altos like ha, oh, then tenor, tenor and then bass. bass. That was very. That was very good actually. We, we went on a choir a choir tour to Germany when I was thirteen. You're like how? And it was all all <laughs> lads. We were driving driving around Oberhausen and Dusseldorf. We sang in Cologne Cathedral, and I tell people, and they're oh, it sounds so geeky. And we were we were from a, a C of E grammar school, non fee paying, easy easy guys, not a fucking Tory. And we saw fit girls, and then sang "Get Your Tits Out" for the lads, but in it, all the parts. Get your tits out. No, no perfectly. Every, and, and no one was allowed to sing someone else's part. So soprano said, "Get your tits out for the lads, for the lads." It was amazing. That is awesome. Yeah, and we got we didn't see any tits. What's your favourite hymn? I am ignoring Adam's yeah. face because I can see what's yeah, happening. You see what's happening. What's your favourite hymn? Gloria, yeah. Gloria. <sighs> We're, in excelsis we've, we've had this conversation before we did it on a patreon episode he we? was have you seen it's sister act it's getting here <laughs> so <laughs> take off all your robes, robes. I am <laughs> getting so good I wanna <laughs> take my robes off I love one kid. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> the middle eastern remix <laughs> Adam Adam uh, Adam's school was a bit like sister act <laughs> don't know if you've heard his mine was like boring CV I think what was my favourite? I told you, didn't I? Uh, is it Handel's Messiah? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got a banger in it. Yeah. I also like Jerusalem. Do you, I like Jerusalem, and I like Lord of the Dance. Those are my two. Lord of the Dance. I am um, the Lord of the Dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all of the Dance, said he. Dance, dance wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the Dance, said he. So Hosanna's good. Ho- yeah. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Of kings. Can you imagine, right, <laughs> if you're like, you know, we're, we're in a block here full of scientists, right? And they can they can definitely normally air us through the walls. Yeah, they heard that one, didn't they? Can you imagine if they heard, like, last week's episode and now they've heard this? <laughs> oh, they just made a discovery that Sing Hosanna's coming out or Hallelujah's coming out. They're like, fuck. No gods here. If they overhear that and then you walk out, that's gonna be. Okay, <laughs> now. Um, so how old were you when you stopped uh, banging on about it? Uh, back, I was about twenty-four. Also quite late then. Yeah, quite late. I started drinking around that time. 
Which came first? <laughs> Which came first? I should have lined up better. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah, I was, I was, I was considering in the pub. I remember <laughs> it's hard in hand. to believe in Alec on a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> really Thing is, Friday is Moss Day, but it's also great down the boozer <laughs> after work. Um, yeah, basically, it was just years and years of just. <clears throat> okay, the tr- basic. The truth is, after nine eleven, a lot of people were really serious about. Islam and stuff and I just couldn't be bothered with the stress and I was just like no nah, it's not for me you've already chopped a bit of my dick off without my consent oh did they do that with you lot as well yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and then <laughs> alcohol's just better in it and bacon better than not having alcohol yeah 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 on a, a slightly serious note so just to qu- qualify that 9-11 thing what do you like what do you mean what do you mean like everyone was serious anti-Muslim or in the both, Muslim community both, got both. serious yeah, yeah yeah there was a lot of like god these white people are fucking shit aren't they I'm like well yeah they are but we don't have to kill them right they're alright aren't they <clears throat> so there's a lot of that going on do you sort of just step back and be like yeah. this is between y'all yeah it's not Your for Homer me. Simpson they just straight into the bush yeah 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 basically came out with a patent <laughs> <laughs> and how are your parents with it well, my mum's dead. Uh, she's so she was all right. right. Yeah, she's, she's fine. A bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was that any incident with 9-11? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. She was flying on a <laughs> Yes! <laughs> <laughs> sing, Hosanna, sing. Uh, yes. Well, we know what episode's getting us in trouble. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yep. And then, <laughs> Do you know, every time I'm with him, right, we get on like a fucking house on fire. I don't see you that often, but we're yeah. always, we, we, we try and make each other laugh. Like a tower on fire. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> oh, God, oh, come God. on, Dan. No, that's really Dan. Dan. So, sorry. I'm For fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, the mic like. Oh, dear. Sorry, guys. Oh, Dan Jamal, shut so, up. So, this is a true story. <laughs> I, I've told this story on uh, another podcast I did with. Another comic recently, but I don't think I've to- I- Sorry. I don't think- I'm so it's funny you didn't say the name. <laughs> I don't think I've told it on this podcast. So, was it last year or the year before? Edinburgh? Last year. So, 2019, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. <coughs> it's the night of the Dave party. Now, for those un- un- uninitiated with the Edinburgh Festival, the Dave party's run by the TV show Dave and they pay for a free bar. It's invite only, but if you'd invited as many drinks as you want. And I was doing Late and Live. Same night, right? It's always dangerous, that, isn't it? Yeah. A oh. free bar followed by late, late and really I late gig. gig. At 3 a.m. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> me, Eshan Akbar, Thomas Green, and Ed Hedges all together <laughs> at the Dave party. And I was like, I've got to do late and live. And they were like, that'd be funny as fuck. Let's go over there. Yeah. So they come with me. Now, we used to play a game at Hot Water. And I tried to get them involved with it that night. So I went, right, I, look, let's have a bet. You all give me a word. If I get it into me set, then you've got to buy me a pint. And if I don't, I've got to buy you one. And you've got to get the word in, in context in a sentence. You can't just like say it. Say it, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. So It's got to make sense in the end. I yeah. think Ed gave me like, <coughs> I, I can't remember what the words were. Ed gave me, you know, platypus and Thomas Green said hot dog, whatever. What did you give me? I said packies. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know which button to do. But I'm just going to go. Oh, now gee. explain to Dan the second level to that bet okay. that you gave it. So I said, get that word into everyone's howling. And I had 200 quid in my pocket, had a very good Uber shift that night. <laughs> I, said to, I said to Adam, listen. I said to him. <laughs> this, is, this is one of our favourite ones ever. <laughs> We're only 23 minutes in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said to Adam, <clears throat> if you get that word in, <clears throat> that's fine. I'll buy you a drink. But if you want this 200 quid, I want you to go on stage and say, any English in? <laughs> Any Scots in? <laughs> Any Pakistan? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Do you know, you know what? Do you know why I know he didn't? 
Do you know why I know he? you didn't have to give him 200 quid? Because if he did that, I'd have already heard this story. And not from him. <laughs> Probably from one of the national newspapers. If I had two more drinks in me, I think I would have done it. But it's a good job I didn't. Because that night, I was <laughs> very, very drunk. And the promoter, Fred, I had to apologise to her the next night because I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that... Uh, I I just, so she, Fred is one of the sounder people in comedy she and sound. she's had that apology before <laughs> you know when I got yeah, to you're gig, not the first person yeah, to be drunk at late 2.45am <laughs> well I walked on stage that night and went to do my Victoria's Secret Museum but a very clunky version of it so I walked on stage when fat people are starting to get fucking annoying aren't they and a girl with like dyed pink hair on the front row went define fat and I went me and a butt <laughs> Wow, it was you know what? Do you know what? In that situation, that's a great answer. That though, is isn't? amazing. Oh, it shut it down completely. But the best part about it was because they knew, because all the comics in the loft bar knew what he'd challenged me to do. There was a, a you know, the side of late and live. <laughs> There's there was, bit, there was yeah. about 15 comics Including Marlon Davis Who has got the most distinctive <laughs> laugh in comedy It's more distinctive than Jimmy Carr Once yeah, you know yeah, it, yeah. it And when that girl went <laughs> To five back and I went me and above You just hear man and go <laughs> <laughs> You know something interesting is happening At a gig like Late in Live When there's 15, 20 comedians All down the side Yeah just Like with it. that look of expectancy yeah. In their what eyes like, happen oh, next, yeah. oh, Funny uh, late and live <gasps> times. Sneaky Not as rock and roll As it used to be And it's late And it's drunk But you're also t you know, you, There's comedy fans But they don't know As much as you think yeah, They might yeah. know And then you've got people Going I actually I'm in the arts So I know what's woke And what's not And that's yeah. disgusting it's, it's actually a weirdly Tricky gig It's dead late People are hammered But also like I think I saw Marcus Birdman Who's one of the nicest Guys in comedy Get called a racist And you're like Oh, oh For the God. love of fuck I've said oh, this before Probably on our show The later and more Drunk people get The more easier It is to offend them Because Certainly with With Good provocative comedy. You're you're dancing on the line, aren't you? Mm, yeah. And if you've written it the right way, I'm not talking at a new material night where anyone can cross the line and you know you're trying to work out where the joke mm. is anyway. But once you know your routine, the idea is you're dancing along the line and you look like you're gonna step over, but you're not gonna. And if you're listening, if you're watching that comic and listening properly, if they've written the routine mm. right, you can't get offended. Because if you listen to every word, there's nothing to be really upset yeah, by. Totally. But if you're not listening to every word, yeah. even the most perfectly written routine <clears throat> that dances right along that line, if you miss a few words and go, hang on, did he just say something about this? No, yeah. all you the, hear the context trigger word, is gone, gone, yeah. Exactly, they <clears throat> had a word. Like the late show at the store in London starts at 11 o'clock at night. And you, sometimes if you close it, you're on stage at half one. And there's people falling asleep and tired and very drunk and they've been out all day and they're not concentrating as much and that that's the show that people get more people think like late's gonna be yeah, really it's edgy. late it's late it's live it's day anything can yeah. happen apart from most things, things you know yeah, yeah. comedy can happen and it has to be within these restrictions yeah. if you're having a debate with someone if you're discussing something if you it's so much easier when they're sober and they can listen even if they completely disagree with you, you can reason with them. It's it, it, if they're drunk, it's harder, and they're latching onto a word or something. That is true. Pass me, just pass me some blue roll, please. That that is true. But I've also had to debate sober Muslims before, and some of them are fucking thick. We're not talking about Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. What's happening? You have a spill. Just You're all right. Just getting a. So I'm. Do you know what? I'm really comfortable. This but that fan is great. Got your own little fan. Thank you. Hey, you really look after the guests. So I appreciate that. Yeah. You're welcome. You You're look welcome. like the heat as well, don't you? Oh. <laughs> From Essex, yeah, we do. <laughs> I was white this morning. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna cross the line on this episode. I can't wait. <laughs> gonna oh. have a few you words. You bring it out to me. You know, there's not another person you know, in the world right. who I want it. There are so many people who say this to me that you make me be racist. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Because you asked me to go on stage and ask if there was any packies in there, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Just put that bit. Out of context, have a word. <laughs> You're oh, fucked. Dear. Jesus Christ. It is true, isn't it? When... 
like if you don't know a comic and they're <laughs> you're like you don't feel comfortable you're like oh, my, maybe I'll do a joke with them but when you're comfortable you set a bar with the jokes and then he's like oh fuck it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's where the bar awful, is this is it? the worst possible friendship I can have because <laughs> like right our friendship we say the most horrific things to each other both yeah. in person on text like I'm worried if there's ever a leak me and him are in prison yeah, I'm not yeah. talking like a few tweets or will be upset we could go to jail for yeah, some of the yeah. shit we said luckily the prisons will be crowded though won't they <laughs> if that leak is more than just you two and yeah, it is yeah. like every dickhead in the country well, I know I've got to say the most offensive thing to make him laugh yeah. or the most ridiculous thing yeah. and you do the same yes. but you bring race into it and because you bring it into our relationship <laughs> it makes me go well that's a hall pass have you just all have you all witnessed how the white guy is blaming me oh for my him being god racist? god <laughs> well i don't do this with anyone else i'm just gonna put my mic down i know three <laughs> other asian people right congratulations <laughs> and not one of them shop. has ever been okay when i've called them that way <laughs> Sing Hosanna, <laughs> sing Hosanna <laughs> to the king of kings. Thing is, a bit of racist banter is funny, though, isn't it? There has yeah. to be an understanding. There has to be an understanding. It's if funny. you for one second thought I actually had any hatred, you, yeah. you, you, you wouldn't be sat here, never mind, okay, in the yeah, banter. Yeah. Yeah. Intent is everything. Yeah. And also, yeah, who's listening? Who's listening? Like, the I, that's internet. What, that's, <laughs> Yeah, wow. but our, we've got one of the cooler bits of the internet, haven't we? <coughs> yeah. Like that's why yeah. I was saying I can't wait to do stand up for the have a word and like do have a word and friends like just stand up yeah. because I think all of that late night like I've heard a word. I think we we you know we were talking the other week about starting from minus ten if you talk about certain issues or starting from zero. We're starting from plus twenty. Like, yeah, 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 they've listened to ninety episodes of us going yeah, blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. They're like, yeah, that's my favorite bit. <laughs> yeah. I this is weirdly one of my worries that they're going to see some of my stand-up that's been developed in, in front of normal crowds and they'll be like, oh, it's a bit <laughs> vanilla. <laughs> yeah. Alfie Brown said it the other week when we saw Alfie Brown, he was like, you're a bit more controversial on the podcast. I'm like, oh God, okay, yeah, I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I play it. I put it in the fair, on the fairway with my stand-up. <laughs> you are, you are yeah, getting yeah. the fucking rough around here. <laughs> you are very amenable on stage. Right. And I'm a cunt on it. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's just it's probably not a good thing sometimes, I think. I think Do you reckon you'll find yourself doing more controversial stuff on stage when you get back? I th I I would like to think I will have an a uh, a different gear for for that kind of gig for a have a word Is there live a particular show. Well, you I think like and forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn at all. I think you will sort of off this podcast it's doing well and we, we we've we been talking and we it's worth just parking here for a second saying to all our new listeners and especially our old listeners who've been with us from day one thank you so much for the support but we've noticed over the past couple of weeks since we opened the studio the numbers are starting to snowball a bit and they're getting bigger and bigger yeah and it's no secret that we want to be doing stand-up tours both as have a word and also I do my own solo tours every year and you're going to be doing that as well. Mm. I think you're going to be a lot more yourself like you are on the pod on that tour and doing exactly the stand-up you want to do. But you're also sensible enough to go on a weekend, people who don't know me, I've got me 20 minutes set that I just put on the fairway. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with having two completely different gears Absolutely. as a comic. Pun I don't think punters ever consider it, but comics have to. It's being employable. Like Absolutely. I could, uh, when when there's a gig offered, I can apply for every slot, and I've no ego. If it's the same money, I happily open. I can compare, I can middle, I can close. But I've been doing it eighteen years, eighteen and a half years, and you, you the, the sharp corners get sanded down by mm. just wanting to earn. And, and yeah. I, I, never, I don't do stuff that I hate, but I have edited out stuff that I've when I've lost a crowd. If you do five gigs in a week or six gigs in a week and four of them are in front of like, we like comedy, we like Jimmy Carr and we watch Live the Apollo sometimes yeah. and it's, you know, Gemma's birthday, yeah. then if you challenge them, challenge them, like Adam's different, he's, from, he's cut from a different cloth. But I think the time that I've been playing to that sort of crowd has just sort of diluted what I do a little bit. And, it, and last year sums it up perfectly. I dumped a whole set after we got back from Edinburgh in, to Edinburgh in 2018. And within four, five, six months, I'd written the uh, swear, on your, swear on your daughter's life bit about the stag do, the smoking bit about how cancer's a bastard. And I'd also got a bit about fighting a child. Right. 
right. three of my all time favorite bits of stand up. And in the end, I shelved them because I was, I was losing one in every three or four gigs because right. I would go to a, a gig, everything was rolling and I would mention cancer. The, the joke was a, it built to something else mm. and, and crowds would go, mm. and then I'd say, I, I, when people are like, you wouldn't swear on your daughter's life. And I'd get crowds going, that's not funny. You should never do that. Doesn't matter how much I reason with it. And that was a really sad little period. I came back from one weekend in Glasgow and I, I, I remember talking to Scott Bennett going, I'm taking them out and I'm putting them on the shelf for another time because I am losing gigs here where it's Saturday night and everyone's like, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. and also then you look at the bill. <clears throat> I'm not working with Adam or you all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm working with guys who are walking on going, oh, who's drinking? Yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you what, my girlfriend and me, we fucking, hey, <laughs> Fritzo. <laughs> if there's one person in your group and he's another, he's probably you. Yeah, right, yeah. And then you get on and go, cancer, swearing your daughter's life. Yeah. And the crowd's like, oh, this is mean. I tell you what I'd love. Uh, there's loads of stuff that I enjoy about the podcasting, but after this, moving forward, I would love it if I, don't need it to be every gig, could start going, that's the whole set that I really want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what I'm, I'd, I'm looking forward to. But that's Just, what happens with us as comics. You kind of build your following so you can do exactly the stuff that you want to do. But you're right, there's a period where you've got to do the jokes that you know are just going to pay the bills and also and get you booked Saturday night Friday yeah, night yeah, yeah. it's 250 quid or whatever I'm not so arrogant though, but, but even if you look at like this is a bit random but Radiohead if you go and see Radiohead on a tour show <clears throat> they'll play a Radiohead fans show then yeah. if they're playing the Leeds Festival yeah. or one of those they will play a this is the people who aren't as yeah. big of fans that's the gear isn't it to just go I, fucking I had to learn this the hard way because I got chased out of the annex of a mosque because okay, <laughs> let's have a word from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's enough. That doesn't sound interesting. <laughs> God. Uh, no, go on, go on. So I was about seven months in. This is the only mirth, last and only mirth control gig I ever did, first and last. In a mosque, that's so mirth control. It was in the annex of a mosque, right? So what happened? If you've never heard of mirth control... I was going to say, if you've never heard of a mosque. If you've never heard of a mosque, it's where muzzies go and, you know, <laughs> young boys sing, ah, ah, something like that. I've yeah. faded out. Um, it's mirth controls, uh, they're promoters in, yeah. in London, yeah, and yeah. they are synonymous with, you know, car sharing yes. and random postcodes that no one has ever put in yeah. fucking Google and before to get to a gig. And you don't even know exist in buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Annex of a mosque. Annex of a mosque. It was for one. All day fundraiser for Palestine, basically. And they wanted some comedy at the end of the gig. <laughs> <laughs> and true to form, it was a segregated gig. So the men were on one side, the women were on the other side. They had the microphone on the men's side and speaker on the women's side. And they said to me, brother, obviously, you, no, don't speak to the women. Right? That's like red rag to a ball. Like, I'm. I want to impress, I'm a comedian, whatever. So I go on stage and I go, hello. The worst thing you can tell a comedian yeah. is, is don't, don't do, do this. this. Yeah. yeah. So I went, hello. I walked over to the side and I went, ladies. And you could just feel the collective air in the room fucking disappear. I went back and this, I believe, was fucking good. So I went back and I said, I think they enjoyed that, but they're all... <laughs> <laughs> that did not go down well at all. Their eyes, I, I, I ripped their it with their eyes. Did. Any English in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any Scottish? <laughs> Do you imagine if you went, Any Pakistan? in? And they were like, Yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. Seven over there. <laughs> oh. What is that? Oh, that's his. Anyway. That, that place. That's, that's pretty, you know. What was wrong with that? Oh, the other day. <laughs> I, on the podcast yeah. I was it the Patreon episode I don't know it was one of the more the interesting Patreon moments episodes. so for any of the patrons you'll know uh, for any public listeners you won't yet um, I, uh, I, I I I tried to do the difference between an Indian and a uh, you're, you're from Bangladeshi no but Bangladeshi oh, heritage mom, your mum's Bangladeshi dad's Pakistani right okay so I do. You, so would you be able to differentiate between an Indian and a Bangladeshi accent yes, yes. so can you tell me whether this is accurate <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Let me set up. Oh, yeah, go on. So my Indian is sort of like slow oh, paced. Jesus. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I just I don't know. 
<laughs> I want you to do the I want you to do the same sentence in an Indian accent and a Bangladeshi. Maybe like a have a word thing. Okay, so um Hello and welcome to the Have a Word podcast. My name is Adam, this is Dan. We have Ashan here today. That's Indian. Okay. <laughs> Bangladeshi. Hello, welcome to the Have a Word podcast. We have Dan and Adam and Ashan is here today. How? I know that Italy has quite a sizable Bangladeshi <laughs> population. <laughs> You're that famous Italian, Jamaican, <laughs> Bengali community. <laughs> oh man, I totally love pizza <laughs> and curry. Oh, and AC Milan. So can you so can you do both and show us what the actual yeah, of course difference I can. is? Right, hold on, hold on. Be- before I do though, hold on. Did you just get the brown guy to do acts? <laughs> Well, because you're telling me you know the difference. I do know the difference. But there'll be regions, won't there, there as well? Be. But what? How many Bangladeshis do you know that you base <laughs> that accent on? Half a one. <laughs> and that's my accent. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> You've done it to yourself. I've done it to myself. Okay, so because <clears throat> we are known to be partial to an accent on this podcast, so I don't okay. know whether you, you you're aware of that. Yes. But we do give them a crack every now and then. Okay. You know, it's a hobby for us, really. Yeah. And it's just, it's good to have an Future expert profession. In. Okay, so <clears throat> the big thing with Bangladeshi over Indian is Bangladeshis, instead of saying the the letter V, they say the letter B. So Beri instead of Very. And any CH words are pronounced as an S. I love how intently Dan is like... I uh, just honestly... I know no one can hear anything, but in my head I'm hearing <laughs> danger. <laughs> danger. Okay. So an Indian accent. Very, very. Indian accent would be, oh, this is very good. I'm very much liking what you are doing. Yeah. Bengali. This is very good. I'm very much liking what you are doing. So they're more pissed off. Yeah. Oh. Because they're smaller so and there's also excited. flooding. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so let me give it another crack. <laughs> <laughs> Hello yeah. and welcome to the Hover Word podcast with Dan Nightingale, Adam Rowe, and Eshan Akpa. Yeah. That's Indian. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Hover Word podcast with very good Dan Nightingale, very good Adam Rowe, and very good <laughs> Eshan Akpa. That's not bad. Yeah. It was more German Jamaican as well. A Touch of German <laughs> Jamaican. <laughs> So, <laughs> fucking oh we get away with fucking mad on this don't we oh god we we should have a word from our sponsors before we, <laughs> oh yeah but before they, before they let's not give them chance to cancel oh, yeah. <laughs> i'm sorry they they can't be they can't wait to be associated with this It's time to have a word without a money <coughs> Tell us all the problems Fuck it It's time to have a word without a money Tell us all the problems or have a difference This was supposed to be the whole podcast Now it's just to find the 10 percent What was that? What I don't know <laughs> Singing <laughs> Doing a little bit of singing so, can, I, can I attempt a Scouse accent? Oh Yes oh. This is going to be so offensive Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to say Yes Get over here, you dirty rat Can I, can I I need to have like an entry phrase They don't need to get into an accent So I need an entry phrase to get into the accent I didn't okay, Yeah, but you're okay. An expert Racist <laughs> what, is, <laughs> so you, what do you want me to say? Get over here, you dirty bastard Dirty rat Dirty rat <clears throat> D- dirty, dirty rat, rat. Okay. Dirty rat. and scene <laughs> Have you done any acting proper? Only web series <laughs> Right, I've done two web series Shot them both on the same day In the afternoon I played a cafe owner In the evening I played a news agent <laughs> Who doubles up on acting gigs? <laughs> this guy oh, For 20 quid each <laughs> 40 quid for we, a day's rent. We could have a whip around now and literally double your <laughs> career earnings Fuck as a know. fucking... Oh, Jesus. Come on. Come on, lads. My favourite fucking city is Liverpool. Get over here, you dirty lads. <laughs> Aye. Are we doing a Scouse little person? <laughs> That's not... <laughs> it's very high-pitched, isn't it? Me favourite. <laughs> Why are you doing a Scouse eight-year-old? My favourite player, Stephen Jones. What's the matter with you? What's wrong with you? That's fucking awful. Fucking awful. 
<laughs> We're fucking off. Why are you doing the scouts child? You, you need to, you need to, like, <coughs> hey, lower. mister. Hey, Me favourite fucking cities. I'm <laughs> sorry. You've nailed That's it. better. That was Me favourite. Me favourite cities, Liverpool. Oh, mm. no, you don't. Mm. Pew, no, pew, no, no, Liverpool. Pew. Me favourite cities, Liverpool. 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 It's not going to double you. Okay, Liverpool. Can, can we just say the irony of Adam looking at Eshan <laughs> like it's bang out of order this time? <laughs> Fucking hell, you're doing it wrong. Fuck <laughs> you, you fucking racist. <laughs> fucking bigotry. <laughs> it was weird how you started that high pitch, though. Me favourite city, Mr. 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 Jamie Carragher. Mr. Mr. Let me out the box. Yeah, he's, he's Jamie Carragher's last. He's about his words. He tries to get them on too quick, doesn't he? I never understand a football. Yeah, we're watching a football, and you, the way he passes it over there, you can't really expect him yeah. to get it anymore. Yeah. What other accents have you got? We're, we're putting together a database. Um, uh, Nigerian. <laughs> oh, yes, <probably>. please. <laughs> okay, yes, so can, please. We, can we do one of our um, auditions? We do this with some of our guests. Oh, yeah, sure. So you, you're an actor. Yes. You've been brought in to our studio, <clears throat> and we're going to give you a nationality, yep. a job, and a yep. scenario yep. of someone. So it might be Mexican lifeguard who is, you know, he's having a bad day because he's lost a five. It might be something sure, like that. Something like that. Um, <laughs> Adam is becoming really fun for this. He gets lost in the weeds of his own role play. Yeah. Right, he's maybe a Mexican, and then I, I could hear it happening. He tried to curtail yeah. it. He's lost a fiver. He's upset, but also there's been a family. You know, there's been, there's been a car. Yeah, there's been a car crash, and he's you know he's, and the electricity's gone, and the favela is on fire, and <laughs> his his nan's dead. And go see see. Let's. What about? Uh, so pick pick one of these. Pick one of these. We we got. Okay, pick a number between one and twelve. Eight. It's my lucky number. So you are a Glaswegian. Oh fuck! Right, I got. Pick a number between one and three. Two. PE teacher. Glass region PE teacher. I yeah. this is going to be so shit. Who has. <laughs> Here he goes. <laughs> Who's been recently. Arrested on suspicion of drink driving. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that, isn't it? Carl, see? Carl's on board. <laughs> a chance face. This is worth more than 20 quid. <laughs> Glass region okay. PE teacher. He's been arrested on suspicion of drink driving. So. I, I'll play the police officer. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Hey, pal. Hey, pal. Can you get out of the fucking car? Oh, <laughs> You're right, pal. <laughs> Has everyone been drinking? <laughs> That's the fucking piss police. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I run, that, the weirdest thing is the people of Glasgow have already suffered more than any other race or culture during the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking an April. Yeah, April yeah. going a bit fast back there when, yeah you want to just step out and blow on this <laughs> hey Kenny hey <laughs> Kenny step out right now <laughs> where have you been pal I've been teaching at school <laughs> Is everyone doing a shit? Like, oh, hey, what do you teach? <laughs> do a bit of running and a bit of gymnastics. <laughs> mate, mate, I don't the best know. episode we've ever done. <laughs> I don't think you. I don't think you go down very well as a PE teacher in Glasgow. <laughs> You fucking rolled in. I think there would be a oh. myriad of problems. Fucking hell. Didn't do bad there. So, um, <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Woo. Pick a number between one <laughs> and do it thirteen. Again. Do it again. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, well, between one, one and thirteen, but not eight. Woo. Three. Venezuelan. Oh my god. <laughs> one and two. One or two. <laughs> one or one. two. One. Nonce. <laughs> Nonce. A Venezuelan yeah. nonce. A Venezuelan paedophile. Yes. Who <laughs> is trying to get his hard drive back that he left on the bus. <laughs> and and left who, who am I talking to? Um, the, so you've come to the bus station okay. and said you've left your hard drive on the bus and okay. 
Uh, at you, you're coming to me. Or oh, do you want to do this one? I'll play. I'll play the. Uh, you play the lady. <coughs> I'll play the lady that works at customer relations at the Venezuelan <laughs> bus yeah. station. And you found this hard drive, and you're suspicious about why you want it back because yeah. he's so sweaty. Go. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the bus station. <laughs> welcome. What What can I do for you? I'm Welsh. I moved to Venezuela, and now I work at the bus station. I'm not doing a fucking Venezuelan. I'm Welsh. I've moved to Venezuela. It happens. <laughs> I'm sorry, love. You're going to have to say that again. I actually speak Spanish, but I missed a lot of that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Hola, senorita. <laughs> eh, I, I, uh, eh, the hard drive. Eh, yeah. <laughs> I needed bit. I'm doing the noises because it's a paedophile, so it's just creepy. Do why do paedophiles make noises? <laughs> just go with it. We get it. We're, okay. we're on board. We're a very experienced actor. Uh, uh, you're uh, you're a lost uh, lost and found. Where is it? <laughs> She's actually quite good. <laughs> I've had to do this before. <laughs> I'm surprised at how good that is. Uh, you- I don't know, love. We uh, we uploaded a few of the images. On the computer here in the Venezuelan bus station, the it's not good as well. That's that's a breach. That's a breach of my privacy. Venezuelan bus station. Yeah, but the thing is, that's a breach. I don't think GDPR covers Venezuela. You know, and GDPR. It's, it's, How hot is it? GDPR. I don't think accepting cookies has got anything to do with the. You know, I seen a fucking eight-year-old's ball bag on your hard drive. <laughs> And I said, you are. <laughs> I'd expect it of a Glaswegian PE teacher, but I don't, I don't expect it of a Venezuelan. I need your help. I need your can help. Can I just write down your like, name? Write like 10 jobs down. Just come up with a list of 10 jobs. I, I'm gonna, can I write your details down? What's your name, please, sir? I'm going to uh, pass this on to my supervisor. Um, me llamo. Me yeah, llamo yeah. Cardinale. Cardinal. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I, we're going religious again, are we? Cardinale Josef. Josef <laughs> Alright I, I dare you to not think of a footballer's name right now This is going to come out fucking Raul <laughs> Morales Morientes no. <laughs> Cardinal Raul Morientes Si sí. Alright Lovely And uh... <laughs> Are you writing this down? I actually did it I got so, I got so, into, the, I got so into the wrong <laughs> Oh, God. and what uh, what is it you do? <laughs> what camera do you use? Lovely, <laughs> lovely picture quality. Can on M fifty. I'm so hot. Because it's can it's can on the camera. He's doing he's doing religious like phone, no phone. Cannon, anyway. Very good, very good. Fuck it, Al. Adam was out of that one. He's prepping. <laughs> he's signed out. Do you oh. have some jobs? I have. Are we doing it again? We'll do at least one more, maybe two. I'm yeah, because fun. it turns out, Ejan, you, this is the most fun we've had for ages. <laughs> so we're not going to like, yeah, that's enough of that. Oh, Jesus Cardinal Christ. Raul Miranda. You Jesus! Under, mate, I tell you, and I'll give you your dues, under pressure, you don't half role play well. <laughs> so. Give you your dues. One I'm to Asian, 15. Mate, immigrants, 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 immigration looking out on anyway. Doesn't matter. One to 15, but you can't have three or eight. Oh, okay. 14. Okay, and uh, how many jobs have you got? Got ten. A number between one and ten. Can I choose eight again? Yeah. yeah. Uh, water slide attendant. A Cockney water slide attendant. Okay, I've got a story about this. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> Not water slide attendant. All right, Ross Noble. <laughs> I, I auditioned to be on EastEnders. Right. Okay. And I got to the fourth round. What? They normally have three, but they call like me... Like the FA Cup. <laughs> to get to the final and win, and then you get to be the Is new Mitchell like, brother. Yes. Is it the yeah. round? Fucking love it if you were the new Mitchell brother. <laughs> Can you imagine? Look at your eyes. And the thing is, the episode would end very quickly because I'd come on screen in the first scene and be like, dun, 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 dun. why is he brown? Uh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> I, you know, haven't they not got an Asian family? They have. I was auditioning to be in the Asian family. Oh, oh I don't know. I think I'm going to say something then. I got to the floor. <laughs> you, as an Asian person, do you yeah. find it slightly annoying when the, there's like an Asian family? 
no, I'm backing out of this conversation. No, 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 carry on. No, 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 you waited in. I, I always think, yeah, they don't look like a family. They all look like it's some Asians co- coupled together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it looks like what an East Ender casting person went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all Asian, aren't they? <laughs> a bit like the street in Walthamstow. Like, yes. oh, these are all Asian shops. Like, exactly. And they're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Got to uh, the f- I don't know what I did there. It was good, though. Yeah, okay. Got to the fourth round, they said, Ishan, look, we really like you. You're good for the character, but you're quite middle class. <laughs> all right. You know, oh my God. can you do Cockney or East End? And I said, listen, I was born in Whitechapel. I am a Cockney through and through. I can do it. And they said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I said, go ahead, do these lines. And I said, can I go out of the room and come back in and I can have the character? If you didn't walk in and go, oi, oi. <laughs> I walked out of the room, opened the door, and went, all right, mate, how's it going? <laughs> Before I finished the going, the car went to bed, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the other one went, I don't know if that's racist, but it's something. <laughs> so, <laughs> That is going to be the little clip at the end of the video. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's racist, but it's something. <laughs> um, right, Cockney Water Slide. Cockney right. Water Slide Ascendant, but what's happened in his life? You need to give us the scenario. <clears throat> Cockney Water Slide Attendant, who um, uh, is just... He's just lost. Am I, am I going all bleak now? I'm doing what you do. Like he's just lost, lost one of the kids. He's really nervy because one of his own kids or one of the kids. No, one of the kids died recently on the water slide. Okay. Just got fucked off right through the water into the car park, right. and he's and just I'm a bit... the parent of of the dead. Kid. Oh no, okay. no, no! He's had a fat kid get stuck in the tube. Okay, and, and I'm the parent of the fat kid. Of the fat kid. Okay. Um. Okay. Oh, Adam's getting into parent mode. Where's the parent going to be? London as well. All right, mate. Manchester. Oh. All right, mate. Where's our fucking Tony? <laughs> Who's Tony? <laughs> he's a fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he the fucking reason I had to close the fucking water slide? <laughs> what are you? What are you on about? Me fucking water slide's <laughs> fucking blocked up because you're fucking Tony. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I've gone through shitloads of fairy liquid trying to get out of this fucker. What have you done with our Tony? Where is it? You're fucking. You see the fucking dam over there? There's a reservoir of fucking water. There's Tony on the other side. And there's all these fucking foams because the fucking fairy liquid ain't getting the fat fucker out. What you feed him? Fucking pie and mash every fucking morning. I'll re- knock <laughs> back a few energy drinks, you fucking gun. This guy. You've only had two 20 quid jobs <laughs> acting. <laughs> Mate, that's worth at least fucking 50 right there. Oh, oh I need God. one more before we move on. <laughs> you actually need one. I need oh. one more. Oh my I'm God. having so much fun. <laughs> I really want to really see if we can do. What number do you want me to say? I want you to say nine. Okay, nine. And what's what's uh, what between one and ten? But you can't have eight. Uh, three. <laughs> Masua. Gay. A Northern Irish Masua. <laughs> yeah, get, uh, but I want him to be flirty and a little bit like okay, you know, or like or nearly all gay comedians on the circuit, like ah, uh, in, uh, what inappropriate <laughs> with all other men. Okay, like to the extent that you're like, wow, that maybe. One day we'll look back and think that probably wasn't all right. Yeah. Hello. Hashtag men too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Straight too. I refuse to answer on the grounds I may incriminate myself. <laughs> so you're a, a little bit too flirty. Okay. Um, can I, am, am I playing the, am I? Client. Uh, <coughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, hi. I've, um, should I just lie down? There's a lot. The power in my shower is very strong. Right. I just want a massage, not a shower. All right. I'll give you a massage. All right. Do you want me to lie down on my front or my back? Wherever you like. <laughs> Northern Irish <laughs> Masua. Northern Irish Masua. All right. I've got a really okay, got, I've, I've got really bad I've, my back's bad I've got I've got knots in my, in my back can I okay well that's really bad 
Oh, I think. Oh, I think. I moved. I moved from south to Belfast. All right. Lie on your back. <laughs> Bengal, Bengal, is Bengali. 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 voice? Yeah. We don't know. I'm just trying to do an Irish accent. You lie on your back and I'll make sure you're oiled up. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Who the fuck is that guy? Habib, get here, you bastard. <laughs> Off the fuck. Track. That might be the worst attempt at an accent I've ever heard. I swear to God, you went Bengali in the middle of that. He did. I am going to build one. Very, very bad. You have got a very nice back. <laughs> Put it on your plant. What's your favourite job on the list? <laughs> picked it, really. Uh, Second favourite. <sighs> fucking. Bus driver. I'll give, oh, I'll give you a back rub. I'm ready for this. Sadiq Khan's dad was a fucking bus driver. Nigerian bus driver I can do this Who has just ran over Four children Jeez. What colour are the children? <laughs> Three are white yes. And one you don't know yet okay. I'm assuming on... they're all white There's rumours that he isn't Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, welcome to the bus <laughs> <laughs> Upset me, nasty bitch. <laughs> How? Where do you want to go? <laughs> we start Make this it episode quick because I need to get out of here very quickly. <laughs> At the start of the episode, you couldn't do the fucking have a word, lady, to save your life. I tell you what, a lot's changed in an hour. You can use contact less. Do you know, Just touch it. Do you know what I think made this not okay? <laughs> <laughs> You need an entry phrase. Could you imagine, like this. Could you imagine <laughs> if this, if everything we've said, the whole content of this episode, had been with Justin Morehouse a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> how cancelled we would about to be! Oh my god! You need an entry phrase, and mine is "eh." Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> the fucking speed bumps around here are getting ridiculous. I thought it was an ad about, but it wasn't. <laughs> a lot of the times, I just go over them in the bus, but this one start crying. <laughs> oh dear Oh dear <laughs> Can we have a word Can we have a word with ourselves <laughs> What's happening guys Today's sponsor is Beer52.com They are the UK's Number one Craft beer Discovery club And they've teamed up with us To give our listeners A free Case of beer that means you get eight free beers, an award-winning beer magazine, and a tasty snack as your first free order. And it's free, you pay nothing, you just pay the £5.95 postage and packaging. You'll then be a member of their Craft Beer Discovery Club, and they send you a different theme of beers every month. Past themes have been the beers of Belgium, the beers of Korea, California, all over the world. Every month, a new theme, and they're always a belter. You'll find craft beers that you'll never find on your own. And also, you can pause your membership at any time. So do us a favour, support the podcast, support our sponsors. Go to beer52.com slash word. That's B-E-E-R 52.com slash W-O-R-D. Every time you sign up, we get a little bit of money. So you get your free beers. There's a little bit of money to support the podcast. It's win-win. I'm a member. I love it. Let's get back to the podcast. We're we'll going to get some beers. Pause it here. Go and get some beers. B52. How do you follow that? How do you follow that? <laughs> Have you got <laughs> I don't want any sp- questions? <laughs> 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 I've just written why in my <laughs> why. Oh. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, dear. Shall we try and do some. Shall we try and do a. <clears throat> Podcast. <laughs> that's so that's really lads, lids. You're two of my favourite lids on the planet. I'm really sorry. Brilliant. I think that's this might have to be a Patreon exclusive. No, you know? fuck that. It's going out. It's too good. What? Oh. It's going out. It's got to go out. Oh, uh, let's deal with a little bit of correspondence. Mark Hammond says, "Lids, help me out." Wait, and- as in the secretary, the, the former. Chancellor. What? Mark Hammond. Yeah, That's Mark Philip Hammond. Philip. It? Yeah, his brother Mark. Mm. Uh, Lids, help me out. In our group chat the other day, me and my wife got called posh cunts. Yes, yeah, definitely his brother. Yeah. 
uh, purely on the basis we have our own separate towels. I was fucking wounded. Explained that if if they had a teenage son who sweated like a nonce in a playground, they'd have their own towels. Are we posh Tory cunts, or are my mates indeed scrubbers like we call them? Keep up the good works. He's literally he's he's had he's had mates call him a to mate. I've been called a Tory on this podcast for fucking all sorts. The one that still stings a little bit was because I had watermelon Lucasade, and he had a fucking massive go at me for being a Tory. Look at Carl. Is it a bit Tory, that? It's borderline, isn't it? It's orange or original, and then... Everything else is a bit Tory. It's a bit close to the bone, isn't it? I just... That's like, it's orange. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like ordinary, like, original, yeah. but people do, don't they? Fuck original is only for if you're in hospital with some sort of... Mental illness. Or operation. <laughs> do you remember the uh, Sweeties, LucasAid Energy Tablets? They came out fucking years ago. Oh, yeah, I didn't have them. Me and my mate, uh, a pack and a half each, <laughs> one sports day. Tried to do performance-enhancing drugs for sports day. <laughs> <laughs> just let just kept eating them, and then didn't win the sports day because okay. it wasn't you know nandrolone, nandrolone, whatever. You, you you you're you're not. This is ridiculous. Isn't I it? finished second from last in my school four mile steeplechase, but the key thing about what? this what? is I finished the wrong way because I got lost. Four mile Say that again. steeplechase. What's a steeplechase? A steeplechase is when the seniors, the juniors, get a head start of. 25 minutes and then the seniors go we do the same four mile route uh, steeplechase is that where you have to jump over things and there's like water troughs? it's cross country I went to a private right. school yes you did yes yeah. you did yeah uh, because so you have runs called steeplechases yes uh, what we did was released one of the local poor children yes um, <laughs> and we the, chased them down here's the thing so fast I, so ill the lack of nutrition you'd really think a, I, a diet of what's it would really slow them I down. was the local poor kid because I got into this school on a scholarship and when you when I come out the school gates it'd be like Range Rover Range Rover my dad's Honda Accord and then Range Rover Range Rover everyone called me Honda they called me e-Honda because see that shows the difference between where you grew up and where I grew up <coughs> because you were seen as a poor kid because your dad picked you up in a Honda Accord <laughs> my dad got me on the handlebars of his bike <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine me and my dad trying to get on the bike too <laughs> fat <laughs> <laughs> it'd be fucking awful <laughs> a Honda Accord by ours it's a good car, isn't it? Whip. It was a great car. A fucking hundred a cord. You fucking sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was the poorest, poorest kid in school. E Honda, because of the Street Fighter character, and the Honda. Eddie Honda. Yep. And Snack Bar. Snack Bar. Because my surname's Akbar. Oh, they were your nicknames. Yeah. <laughs> Snack Bar. <laughs> it's not bad. And yeah, you have separate towels, though, don't you? This is just ridiculous. Yeah. Don't feel bad. Right. Literally, Mark. Everyone's got separate towels, but your mates are fucking scrubbers. Yeah, of course everyone's got... I don't understand. Who... Why would you... Who would you share towels with? You've got to have a hand towel. What? <laughs> oh, God, you... You really... Honestly. So like you have I, your own hand towel in the house? We just have yeah. one. We, me and my... My missus uses a towel. I use a towel. We don't share... She doesn't... I don't... I, just, I yeah. use any towel. But she's, she wants... But I've got a stack of hand towels. So we have a towel on the back of the bathroom door. And that's yeah. the one you use until it smells weird and then you oh, wash do, it. Oh, you share towels? No, we have one each. Yeah, okay. But like, I use that to, like, after I've brushed my teeth Back and got a bit of water door. on face, wipe it on that. Yeah? What's wrong isn't with that? Isn't that a bit musty? Why? Do you not like yeah, air it out or dry it? Yeah. No, just put it on the, on the hook. Why? Yeah, but then it hangs and doesn't yeah. it feel a bit yeah, musty? Yeah, and when it hangs like that, it doesn't air. <coughs> no, well, it sounds. It's normally dry the next day. It's a bit crusty sometimes, but... Well, it might be a bit musty. No. She used it for me face. Balls. I only do me balls in the bath or the shower. Yeah. I don't okay. I don't give me balls. A so you have a main towel sink so and, and a, a hand towel. towel. And I've got a stack of ten towels, ten smaller hand towels for when I wash my hands and my face. <laughs> have you got OCD? That is the most like I have ten hand no, towels. Well, it's, One for each finger and thumb. Yeah, it was it was just the the packet came in. The what? <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> uh, the packet, there are fives, there are five hand towels. So yeah, we use the hand towels for ha hands and face. And we have a basket for the hand towels, which we then wash. And I've got my normal towels. So but does everyone in your house have a hand? Who, who do you live with? My dad. Just you and your dad? Not your brother? No. 
So just you and your dad. So does your dad have a separate towel or do you share a towel? Separate towel, and we've also got a stack of guest towels. Right. For when people stay. Do you live in a mansion? No. I mean, that was a considered no, wasn't it? No, it's not a mansion. It's not. I have done some renovations recently, which make it look bigger, but it's not a mansion. No. Renovations don't make anything look bigger. Yeah, but in London, if you have a third bedroom, it's a, essentially How many a bedrooms is it? Four. <sighs> in London? Hey, no, boy. You're doing all right, aren't you? <laughs> hey. It's what? all that second, third property, multi occupancy. Uh, uh, hang on. <laughs> what was this? <laughs> what, what extent? What have you done? What, what, what renovations have you made to a four bedroom? What have you done? We've got a new conservatory roof, a oh. new toilet downstairs, new kitchen, new flooring, new rewiring, new bathroom upstairs. And a new cupboard for all the hand towels. towels. Yeah. Who and needs a, a cupboard guest for the staff? No. <laughs> <laughs> you got any staff? Not in this country. <laughs> <laughs> the best one we've ever done. It was such a good time. I can't. We've so, got to have a word. I'm so hot and tired. <laughs> the podcast's called Have a Word. I know it doesn't need to be every time though. We've not do. We sometimes don't do Have a Words, and I've just read through it, and it's dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> it literally up your game, it, word it, is. It literally, you know how we've just sort of saved that towel banter, just about. I'm just looking at this going, this episode has been way too good to bog it down with. <laughs> we get some great ones. Yeah. The internet's not working. This I printed out. I regret it. Come on, worders. Fix up. Oh, uh, okay. Well, if you do have problems with your friends, family, and you want us to just have a go at anyone in society, have a word pod at gmail.com and we'll sort it out. Get in touch with us. If your neighbour's being a dickhead, moan the lawn too early in the morning, is your dad a smackhead? You want to have an intervention? We'll do it for you. <laughs> are we going to get out of this? I really feel like all of us are sat here going, oh, I probably should some say something about race in some way. If you... Bombay mix, anyone? No? Okay. <laughs> if you... Accents? Bengal? I have loved this episode. Oh, if you have enjoyed so it, uh, there's loads more available. There's loads on the mm. likes of Apple, Spotify, Podbean, places like that. And we've very recently, this will be, you know, we've very recently started putting them on YouTube, youtube.com slash have a weird pod. Go and watch them in glorious HD. You might be watching this right now. Uh, if you are subscribed to the channel for us, ring the bell. It means you get a little notification every time we upload a video. Leave a comment. Do all that good shit. The more comments, likes, and subscribers we get, the better it is for us, the better it is for you. Help us build something special here. It's going well. Eshan, that was fucking phenomenal. Will you come back again soon, please? I would absolutely love to, yeah. I really had a great time. <sighs> Guys. Bye. Ba 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 can we do it in uh, Bengali? Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. What? Bye, Felicia. Bye, bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Have a very good time. <laughs> Felicia, don't, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Disgusting. <laughs> Follow me, Michael Packentire. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you got anything you want to plug? Uh, I do a podcast on Tuesdays called Doing Bits Live, which Adam was woefully unprepared for <laughs> and just could not be bothered. It was He's good though, isn't he? He's, he can I wing just, it, he's wing I, it. I just turned up and just he was like, so have you got any new material that you want to run through? I was like, nope. Oh, is that what this is? No. <laughs> um, uh, so Doing Bits just Live. Just turns up Tuesday. with his big dick energy. <laughs> Doing Bits Live on Tuesdays. Check out 9.29 on Spotify. And on Saturdays, I am the regular host of an 11 till 4 p.m. show on, guess what? The BBC Asian Network. Yeah, tune in. Thanks for coming in, mate. We'll see you very soon. See you soon. Bye, guys. Thanks very, very much for watching. As always, guys, make sure you're subscribed to the channel below. Make sure you're following at Have A Weird Pod on all the social media. And it would mean the world to us if you went away and supported our sponsors. This week, that is Manscaped.com. They are the best male grooming products on the planet. And you'll get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code WORD. That's W-O-R-D. Make sure you use that. That lets them know we sent you and they slide us a bit of dough and it keeps this shit running. And our merch store is at haveawordpod.com. Get yourself a Have A Word Pod hoodie, T-shirt, all the merch is there at haveawordpod.com. Thanks for watching. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Become a patron too. Don't be a pussy. <laughs>